one rainy night, a man inquires of his butler about a visitor. He inquired as to whether her name was Tatiana Lauren de Carchien. The butler stated that he informed the lady that he would be absent, but she insisted on waiting. When he hears that, he hurries to the room where Lady Tatiana is waiting. After opening the door, she revealed herself to be Lady Tatiana of House Carchien. The man asked the lady what she wanted because she was not a frequent visitor to that type of place. He also explained why a well-off noble lady like herself came to him, a commoner, and asked for a glass of wine. After getting a glass of wine, the lady directly asked him to marry her. The man was taken aback, but the lady went on to add that she had waited so long so that she could ask him to marry her. The man became enraged and informed her that while he was interested in her some time ago, he was only interested in her physical appearance and not in her. To his astonishment, the lady responded it was great because he was interested in the only thing she possessed. The man questioned her whether she understood what she was saying and assumed she had any sense of logic. The man continued to speak and addressed her as Lady Carchien, but the lady interrupted him and stated that she had already given up that name. To be more specific, she was stripped of it. That astonished the man, and the lady asked if they could resume the details right away. Just before that incident, at Atlas Duchy, people were chattering about the Duke's proposal and the talks of Her Majesty and Viscountess Carchien's agreement. They also discuss how the banquet aligns with the lady's 21st birthday. Lady Tatiana appeared as people were chatting. They now understood why the Atlas Duchy had spent so much money on the banquet. Anesha Burden, the eldest daughter of House Carchien, showed up and complimented Tatiana. Their late father, she added, would be proud of her. Anesha went on to say that Tatiana's brother-in-law, her husband, had arranged a mark sapphire for Tatiana as a present. Anesia was discussing her marriage when she suddenly remembered that she couldn't see her husband or even Duke Atlas anywhere when a woman interrupted their talk. It was their mother, Viscountess Larissa Lauren de Carchien. She inquired about her second daughter, Regina, who was nowhere to be found. She went on to remark that Regina should be tired of traveling by now and warned Tatiana not to be like her sister Regina. Tatiana was their mother's most valued jewel and her last hope, so their mother asked Tatiana if she understood what she was saying. Tatiana nodded to their mother. Tatiana's mother informed her that she should be pleased since Her Majesty had prepared a 100-carat diamond engagement ring for her. Her Majesty was in charge of her nephew's wedding as the Duchess was no longer present. The Viscountess asked her daughter Tatiana if she could count on her for the evening, and Tatiana said that she would do her best to appear surprised. Tatiana envisioned herself acting foolishly when the Duke proposed to her with the diamond. She'll put on an innocent, teary-eyed, and deeply moved expression. She was confident that the onlookers would not be deceived, but it was high society etiquette to pretend to be ignorant. Tatiana mentioned to her mother that she was exhausted, so her mother suggested that she rest upstairs where no one would bother her. People greeted and congratulated Tatiana as she moved through the gathering until they noticed someone walking in. It was Camille, a commoner. She was insulted by the crowd because she was not an aristocrat and dared to show her face at the banquet. Camille smiled at Tatiana as she passed by, and Tatiana returned the smile. Tatiana concluded that the crime of being born a commoner creates an unseen barrier, but Camille was doing everything she could to overcome it. Tatiana remembered a man who could break down that barrier while she was thinking about it. It was Kynal, the crimson-eyed death. Tatiana blocked off the memory of Kynal because she didn't know him well and her engagement was the only thing she should be thinking about. While heading up the stairs, she considered the 100-carat diamond she would be receiving, but she questioned its usefulness because it would be too heavy to wear. She wondered if all brides experienced the same emotions she did. Tatiana froze at the front of a door when she heard conversations inside. A female was doing something to a man while telling him not to be too loud because his fiancé would hear them. The man told the girl not to worry because his fiancé was nicknamed a doll for no reason and was probably busy being coddled by her mother and trying on pricey diamonds. 
while they were kissing, someone opened the door, surprising the man. It was Tatiana, the man's fiancée. Tatiana suddenly remembered something. When her sister Regina's husband cheated on her a few years ago, their mother's response was that men and women both cheat. Their mother did not advocate for equal rights for men and women. She was simply stating that the gains and losses must be calculated and acted accordingly. The man inquired as to Tatiana's purpose for being there. Tatiana was staring at her fiancé and the girl beside him with a cold expression on her face. Her fiancé was nervous and couldn't even describe what was going on precisely. Tatiana was debating what she should do next. She wants nothing more than to pull them downstairs and disgrace them, but this will not help her. Rumors will circulate and details will be created, and she is certain she will not be spared. This was her worst birthday yet. She's not surprised because she'd expect nothing less from her fiancé, but not on the day he was going to propose to her. The man panicked and assured Tatiana that it was all a misunderstanding, but Tatiana told him she was leaving and he would clean up the mess. She told him he could tell everyone that he had been summoned to the palace or that he had fallen down the stairs. She doesn't mind his explanation as long as he doesn't mention her name. The man inquired about their engagement, but Tatiana replied that he only recalled it now because of what he had done. After hearing it, both the man and the lady were ashamed. Tatiana informed the man before departing that she was delighted she found them before getting a ring and that they wouldn't owe each other anything. The man called her Tiara, and Tatiana stopped urging him not to call her that. Tatiana's other sisters, Viviana Ravani, the fourth daughter of House Karshien, and Katerina Anti, the third daughter of House Karshien, approached her outside the banquet hall and inquired as to what she was doing. They inquired as to if the banquet was over, but Tatiana was not wearing a ring. Tatiana replied that nothing had finished since it had never begun. Her two sisters were perplexed and inquired as to what she meant. Tatiana instructed her sisters to inform their mother to inspect the second-floor study to discover how animals mate. When Tatiana arrived at their home, a maid ran over to her. The maid had not expected her to return so quickly. She asked Tatiana if she wanted them to make her dinner or if she wanted to take a bath first. Tatiana asked her maid what day it was and the maid enthusiastically replied that it was her birthday as well as the day of her engagement to Duke Atlas. Tatiana was irritated to hear it because rumors circulated so quickly. Tatiana thinks seriously in her room about her mother's intention to have Duke Atlas accompany her to the charity event this weekend. Her mother also stated that a duke should be kind enough to do so. Tatiana thought her time had finally come, and she expected it after her sister Vivi's wedding four years ago. She also assumed that a viscountess referring to a duke that his descent was something only her mother could say. Larissa Lauren de Carchienne, her mother, was a miserable widow with five kids and no fortune, but her lovely daughters became her most valuable possessions. She married her eldest daughter, Anesha, to Count Auburden, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, 17 years ago. Then there was Regina, who was married to a wealthy man. The Viscountess increased her value with these two weddings, before moving on to the next target. Katerina, her third daughter, won the heart of Count Antti, the Minister of Justice. Following that, proposals for Katerina's twin, Viviana, began to pour in. Viscountess Karshien had dominated high society for twenty years, and all that remained was to find an appropriate partner for her beloved Tatiana. Tatiana's sisters all volunteered to assist their mother in finding a marriage partner for their dear sister, Tatiana. They questioned their mother if their sister required fortune, power, or prestige. Their mother replied that it should have everything because it was for their dearest tiara, after all. Alexei Atlas was the only man who could meet their mother's requirements. The House Atlas was the most powerful of the Freya Empire's three duchies. It was also the residence of Charlize, the imperial consort. Charlize was the de facto lady of the palace in the absence of an empress. Alexei, her nephew, was young, handsome, and ambitious. He was the most eligible bachelor. 
The sisters initially thought the unbalanced match was impossible, but they quickly used all of their husband's resources for their loving baby sister, Tatiana. The Viscountess secured an agreement with the imperial consort in just two months, and a 100-carat diamond was promised for Tatiana's 21st birthday. Tatiana no longer cares about the diamond after what Alexei did at the banquet, but people will be talking, and there will be a great controversy. Her mother and sisters barge into her room when she is deep in concentration. Her mother was concerned and inquired as to her well-being. Tatiana told her mother that her sisters, Katerina and Viviana, had already discussed what had occurred, therefore she had no reason to stay. Tatiana was perplexed as she looked at her mother's worried expression because her mother was not angry with her, despite the fact that she had spent a fortune to make the engagement happen. Her mother demanded that she explain what had occurred back there. Tatiana told her mother that she happened to see Alexei and the girl together while walking by the second-floor study. Her sisters were outraged, and her mother was now aware of the details. Tatiana went on to add that Alexei should be thankful she didn't raise a commotion there. Tatiana was enraged, claiming that he had spent the previous two months courting her only to fool around with another lady on the day he was supposed to propose. The Viscountess felt sorry for her daughter since she knew how terrible that must have been. Tatiana apologized to her mother for leaving so abruptly because she hadn't considered what would happen next. Her mother advised her not to be concerned and to leave everything to her as she would handle it. The Viscountess and the eldest daughter were having tea when the eldest told her mother that she had done the right thing because Tatiana needed to relax after what had happened. The Viscountess said that Alexei should have picked a better place to fool around instead of the study. The eldest daughter stopped her mother, explaining that it didn't matter where it was, but Tiara was more significant because this had never occurred before. Tiara was too proud to accept such humiliation. Her mother, on the other hand, claimed it was the problem since she spoiled her too much. She also remarked, coldly, that she should have taught Tatiana to brush past something like that. When Tatiana inquired about what happened after she departed, the twin sisters consoled her. The twin told her that their mother went upstairs and handled things herself and that nothing really happened because they didn't want to draw attention to themselves. They went on to state that the duke left because he had pressing business at the palace. Tatiana became upset when she realized Alexei couldn't even come up with his own justification and simply repeated what she told him. She also remembered what she had heard on the inside about what Alexei had told the girl he was with. Tatiana feels nauseated just thinking about it. She never thought of him as ideal husband material, but they wouldn't have gotten this far if she was opposed to marrying him, even if the Viscountess attempted to persuade her otherwise. The Duke is a qualified bachelor. He may not be perfect, but his background was. She wasn't expecting a fairy tale love story, but she assumed they would have lived happily ever after as husband and wife. She wondered if her expectations were too high. The Winter Empire, Freya, the capital of Leverin, was blessed with the midnight sun half of the year. It has a vibrant culture that makes full use of the extended daylight. Floyna Palace, located in the deepest section of the dazzling royal palace, is where the imperial consort resides. The Viscountess and Her Majesty were enjoying tea inside the Floyna Palace. The Viscountess praised the location and informed Her Majesty that the greenhouse had been taken from the Carmenian royal family by her son-in-law, Count Auburton. She went on to say that the King of Carmenia asked her son-in-law not to take the greenhouse, but he couldn't because his highness, the young prince, was sensitive to cold. Her Majesty told the Viscountess to cut to the chase and express what she needed to say. She further stated that Alexei informed her about the little incident. The Viscountess cut her off, suggesting that perhaps Her Majesty had been spared all of the details. She simply cannot comprehend why Alexei felt compelled to do such a thing on Tatiana's birthday. She said, I assumed Alexei knew better. When Her Majesty heard this, she questioned the Viscountess whether she was insulting her family. The Viscountess denied it, saying she would never ever consider it. Her Majesty then told her that what had happened was regretful. 
The Viscountess agreed and stated that she hoped to become Her Majesty's in law, but that it was already out of their hands. Her Majesty asked the Viscountess if she meant to call off the engagement. She also expressed concern that the Viscountess had taken their agreement so lightly and reminded her that the House Atlas would become maternal relatives to the future emperor. The Viscountess stated firmly that it was the House Atlas who treated their agreement lightly. After making that declaration, the Viscountess bid Her Majesty farewell because she still needed to look after her daughter Tatiana, who was better than from the shock. Her Majesty smiled and wished Tatiana a full recovery, but in the back of her mind, she was thinking that she had nothing to lose because his son was to be the future emperor. The Viscountess came to a halt and addressed one last thing to Her Majesty. She inquired of Her Majesty whether she was aware that His Highness, the Crown Prince, would be returning to Leverin in two days, accompanied by the famous Crimson-Eyed Wolf. Her Majesty was taken aback by that shocking news. Her Majesty questioned the Viscountess if that information was true, and she replied that it was. She also stated that she learned about it through her son-in-law, Marquis Ravani, who was always the first to receive such news. After stating that, the Viscountess was about to leave when Her Majesty inquired about Tatiana's health. That caused the Viscountess to pause and reflect on the fact that Her Majesty now knew where she stood. Tatiana had gone shopping and was surrounded by other wealthy ladies. They informed Tatiana that it had been much too long since she had bought with them. Tatiana doesn't need to go shopping, according to Aileen, because her sisters and sisters' husbands always present her with gifts. Another lady commented on Tatiana's ability to empty all the stores. They inquired if she still wanted to go shopping, but Tatiana said she was tired of looking because all the outfits looked the same. They discussed how different the dresses were in the South, where they revealed a lot of cleavage. Aileen learned that such outfits were also being marketed in Leverin by a designer named Camille. Rebecca, another woman, referred to the designer as Count Tara's mistress. She also mentioned that those outfits could suit Aileen because they're presumably cheaper with all that missing cloth and hence less of a burden on her wallet. Tatiana immediately stopped Rebecca, stating that Countess Tara's died a long time ago and that designer Camille was hardly a mistress. Rebecca became enraged, but Tatiana continued that she didn't understand why Rebecca kept bringing up someone she declared to despise. She also asked the lady called Aileen if her brother had informed her about the trend down south, to which the lady replied that she had since her brother had returned from the battlefield a few days before. The woman also mentioned that she had heard the palace was planning a ball to commemorate their victory. That implies all of the knights will be present. Tatiana assumed that the knights were finally returning after three long years. A woman stated that the victory was entirely due to His Highness, the Crown Prince, but Rebecca stopped her by stating that the victory was due to the Black Wolf. She went on to say that everyone knew the Black Wolf was the one that conquered half of Freya's new territories, and he was now known as the Crimson Eyed Death. As Rebecca proceeded to speak about the Crimson Eyed Death, the other ladies gazed at her as if she was up to something. Rebecca then stated that Tatiana knew more about that man than they did since she had seen him up close and personal. Tatiana stared at Rebecca and realized what she had been hoping for. Rebecca, on the other hand, was envious of Tatiana, believing that she, not Tatiana, should have been the queen of high society because she was the daughter of Count Carrion. She treated Tatiana as if she were important since everyone was attracted to her, but she was nothing without her wealthy in-laws. She also revealed that the Crimson-Eyed Death wanted to dance with Tatiana before departing the battle. Furthermore, he addressed a letter to Tatiana's residence just to be humiliated in the worst way possible. The Crown Prince, His Highness, sought to bestow titles on him, but he denied them all. Rebecca appeared to be agitating Tatiana, which made the other ladies nervous. She even stated that they understand how Tatiana's mother must have felt when Tatiana's name was linked to a commoner, such as the Crimson-Eyed Death. Rebecca insisted on Tatiana telling them about the Crimson-Eyed Death. 
Tatiana smiled and replied that his letter wasn't the only one she had received and that there were far too many for her to remember each one. Rebecca became irritated by her response and brought up her engagement to the Duke. She informed Tatiana that everyone was expecting her to acquire an engagement ring on her 21st birthday, but the Duke left the celebration because he needed to go to the palace. She assumed she had already defeated Tatiana because she was aware that something had gone wrong at her birthday celebration, so she inquired as to what had occurred that day. Tatiana wasn't moved by what she said, so she asked Rebecca if that was all she had to say to her. She reminded Rebecca of what her mother can do to people who irritate her, and Rebecca became concerned and was going to say something, but Tatiana interrupted her and said she didn't need to worry. Her mother may be cruel and cold, but only to those who deserve her attention. Rebecca was dumbfounded as Tatiana walked away. Tatiana's maid was concerned about what she said to Miss Rebecca since she may harbor a grudge against her and spread vicious stories. Tatiana assured her maid that Rebecca would be okay, adding that while she was immensely jealous, she was also calculated. While they are both conversing, Tatiana notices some noise outside and looks out the window to see what is going on. But it was the two men wearing cloaks that she noticed. She believed they were mercenaries, but after seeing the man with the black hair, she realized he seemed familiar. A man approached and talked to Tatiana as she was immersed in her thoughts and staring at the back of the man in a cloak. It was Duke Atlas, the fiancé who cheated on her. When the Duke noticed Tatiana at the store, he frowned. He told Tatiana that he hadn't seen her in days, but he found her shopping at the store. The two may be seen outside, which drew the attention of one of the two cloaked men. The man was concerned that his companion may see Tatiana. His companion was none other than Kynal, the one they called the Crimson Eyed Death. While going, the guy told his captain that he needed to decide on what His Highness had commanded that day. Captain Kynal, on the other hand, seems unconcerned and lets his subordinate decide. His subordinate informed his captain that he could not choose his house. He convinced himself that his captain was uninterested in the world around him. But because he was a hero who even saved the crown prince's life, he deserved to lead a homecoming procession and be greeted by crowds of people. Because Leverin was a vast city, he requested his captain to at least inform him which neighborhood he favored. Kynal came to a halt when he heard it. And, while his subordinate was telling that His Highness had recommended a location near the royal palace, Kynal interrupted him, adding that it should be somewhere far away while he pondered about Tatiana. He expresses to his subordinate that it should be somewhere far away since he does not want to see Tatiana. Back to Duke Atlas and Tatiana, the Duke called Tatiana Tiara and urged her to say anything but Tatiana just told him not to mention her name again. Tatiana thought he was a nuisance, and that others would undoubtedly speak about them because so many people were gazing. The Duke encouraged Tatiana to stop being so immature and talk things out. Tatiana agreed to chat but warned him to keep it short. He informed her that they might have worked things out, but why did she leave in a huff? Tatiana informed him that he was absolutely wrong but the Duke claimed that it was her fault. He went on to say that marriage was not a joke. He went on to explain that he knew she was immature, but she couldn't simply act as she wanted, and that she had no idea how she made things tough for him that day. Tatiana can't believe what she's hearing from him and becomes irritated. She asked the Duke if she still needed to understand what she witnessed that day. Tatiana said that they had finished talking and that whatever the Duke was hoping to accomplish by being there, she wanted nothing more to do with him. The Duke raged at him, wondering why Tatiana would kick Natalia out. Tatiana was perplexed for a minute since she didn't recognize Natalia, but after some thought, she remembered and inquired whether the woman he was with that day was named Natalia. The Duke warned her not to act innocent since he knew everything. Natalia approached him, her tears welling up. He questioned why she had to force her out of the hotel in such cold weather. Tatiana asked him again, since she didn't understand, and the Duke informed her that no one else in Leverin would do it but her. Tatiana was certain it was her sister's doing. 
She questioned the Duke if he was upset over their broken engagement or because his little mistress had been kicked out. Tatiana knew the Duke would be dumbfounded, so she informed him that if his answer was the former, things were already finished between them, but if his answer was the latter, he was talking to the wrong person. The Duke didn't stop there, labeling Tatiana as heartless since it's not like he wanted to marry that woman Natalia. He also stated that Tatiana had already had all she desired, so why couldn't she just let the incident go? Natalia was prohibited from staying at any hotel on Main Street after she got kicked out. Tatiana advised him that if he was so concerned about the woman, he should just take her in. After hearing it, the Duke was taken aback. Tatiana proceeded to insult him, claiming that he shouldn't be criticizing her sisters when he can't even care about her mistress. And she reminded him that the owner of all the hotels there chooses who stays where. The Duke stopped arguing with her since he knew she wasn't the one who had kicked his mistress out, but he did tell her that he would hold her sisters accountable for what they had done. Tatiana smiled and informed the Duke that he should be thankful that was all her sisters did because if her sister Regina had been present, that unfortunate woman of his would have already been discovered in the Sart River. She went on to suggest that he should be grateful for the fact that she didn't love him. That startled the Duke even more and Tatiana added that if she had, he would have floated up the Sart River with his woman. Tatiana was about to leave when she informed the Duke that she hoped it would be their last meeting, because if her mother found out that he had been to visit her about such stuff, it would mean the end of everything to be grateful for. The Duke grinned smugly and asked Tatiana who she thought told him she was there. Tatiana came to a halt, surprised to hear that. At the Karshien's house, the Viscountess was excitedly questioning the other women in the room about what fabric would be finest for Tatiana's engagement ceremony dress since she couldn't decide and wanted to hear their opinions. After hearing about the engagement ceremony, the other women were taken aback. They concluded that the rumors about breaking off the engagement were false. The Viscountess was discussing something glamorous that would need to match all the gems when Tatiana slammed the door and called upon her mother. The women were taken aback when Tatiana stormed into the room. The Viscountess greeted her daughter with a smile and expressed surprise that she had returned so fast. Tatiana now knew what the Duke had stated was correct. She asked her mother what all of it was about. The Viscountess said her name but Tatiana cut her off by asking if she had anything to say to her. Her mother sighed and told the other women to resume their gathering later. Because the woman didn't grasp it, the Viscountess just told them she had a horrible headache. Even though the women did not want to go since they wanted to hear their conversations, they were forced to do so. Tatiana inquired as to what was going on, and her mother informed her that it was for her dress. She inquired as to why she needed a dress. The Viscountess replied that it was for her engagement ceremony and that it was appropriate for the future Duchess. Tatiana became enraged when she heard the words future duchess and questioned her mother how she could do such a thing to her. She went on to say that she had been humiliated that day and that her mother had assured her she wouldn't have to see the duke's face again if she didn't want to, so how could her mother have informed the duke where she was? The Viscountess just listened to her concerns and even suggested that she should have asked him to their house. The Viscountess said that she would and that it would have been better if she had taken him with her. Tatiana was taken aback and couldn't believe what her mother had just said to her. She questioned how she could do it to her of all people. The Viscountess responded, explaining that it was because she was her mother. Her mother gave her a serious look and told her that she couldn't allow her complaining to continue. She also admitted to Tatiana that she had pampered her too much. She continued by saying that she had never forced Tatiana to do anything in her life. She was trying to provide her with what every girl desires, but she insisted on making things difficult over a little matter. The Viscountess stated that all she sought was for Tatiana to recover and regain her composure, but Tatiana informed her mother that it was over between her and the Duke. What he did to Tatiana was too much for her to bear, so she can't act as if nothing happened. She questioned her mother whether she expected her to cry with joy upon seeing the Duke again after all that humiliation. 
When the Viscountess heard that, she informed Tatiana that she had no clue what true humiliation was like and that it was nothing like what she had experienced. The Viscountess went on to say that the true humiliation was not being able to grieve the death of her debt-ridden husband since her girls would have starved if she had wept and mourned. She went on to claim that walking ten kilometers without a carriage and with four girls in tow was humiliating barely a day after her husband's death. She informed Tatiana that the actual humiliations were asking her unwelcoming mother-in-law for food, enduring verbal abuse about outliving her husband in exchange for a piece of bread and hiding inside the storehouse to suppress her morning sickness. She informed Tatiana that what she had gone through was nothing in comparison, and in fact, it was much better. She turned away from Tatiana and stated that Her Majesty was granting her mutant villa as compensation for the little incident. She went on to remark that it was the hottest spot in Leveron, so it would be ideal in the winter, and that she could go there to rest if anything like that happened again. Tatiana questioned her mother if she lacked dignity, and her mother inquired if what she said was dignity. She pointed at Tatiana, reminding her that if she had kept her dignity, she would not be where she is today. Anesha, the eldest daughter of House Karshien, came to their house and inquired about the things that were in front of them. The twin sisters were also present. Their mother informed Anesha that they had been preparing for an engagement. Tatiana's ring size will have to be remeasured because her fingers must have shrunk as a result of her weight loss. Anesha questioned her mother, concerned if the marriage would go forward, and their mother said that it would. Anesha scanned the place to look for Tatiana and inquired whether she was indeed on a hunger strike. She told the maid to gather Tatiana's belongings since she was taking Tatiana to her house. Tatiana's maid followed the instructions and walked upstairs. Her mother glanced at the maid and asked Anesha if the maid had told her about the strike and if so, she should dismiss her. However, Anesha informed their mother that the maid was only concerned about Tatiana. Their mother smiled and assured them that Tatiana was well and that they had nothing to be concerned about. Anesha questioned their mother's decision to marry Tatiana to the Duke. Anesha was taken aback when their mother urged her to bring a more suitable partner if it wasn't the Duke. Their mother remarked that finding someone with the Duke's background and riches was difficult. She went on to explain that Tatiana would not have to deal with unpleasant in law brothers like Kitty nor would she have to deal with difficult in-law parents, like Vivi. Anesha yelled at her mother, saying that the Duke cheated on Tatiana. After hearing it, their mother gave them a stern look. She wanted her girls to state honestly that they were unaware of the affairs. She went on to add that growing up, high society was their playground, so how could they have not known? They were all suspicious, and their mother was certain they had heard far worse than what Tatiana discovered. Anesha pleaded with their mother to stop, but their mother persisted, saying that they may have thought they could hide it until after the wedding. From upstairs, a loud noise was heard. Tatiana was the one who said she didn't believe it. She had a sad expression on her face as she listened in on their conversation. Their mother noticed that Tatiana was out of her room and was already listening to their conversation so she deliberately let her hear that Tatiana's sisters already knew her fiancé's cheating, but they didn't say anything to their youngest sister Tatiana. When Tatiana was shocked to hear that, their mother smiled as she planned to let Tatiana hear everything. Tatiana couldn't believe it and her sisters were shocked. Their mother made Tatiana aware that her sisters were more untrustworthy than her as she was always telling the truth unlike Tatiana's sister who kept silent. The Viscountess told her youngest daughter to just listen to her, but Tatiana made it very clear to her mother that she won't marry the Duke. Before things got heated up, the eldest daughter stopped Tatiana from provoking their mother, but she pushed her away as she was no different from their mother. The Viscountess interrupted them and told Tatiana that her sisters kept silent as they needed Tatiana to be the Duchess for their own interests. She added that the eldest will become the lady of the Auburn Mercantile, but only after she improves her credit to the banks, which will need the help of the Duke. The twin sisters were planning to open hotels all across the Freya Empire, which will easily be achieved with the help of the Duke.
Tatiana was angry and asked her mother if that was the reason why she was forcing the marriage on her. Their mother told Tatiana that she was no different as she was living a luxurious life, thanks to her brothers-in-law, so her sisters should expect the same thing back from her when she married the duke. Anesha begged her mother to stop and asked to take her younger sister with her, but their mother threatened the eldest daughter that she must let go of her mother first, before she could take Tatiana with her. Tatiana knew that her mother's threat was not an empty word as she didn't need her sons-in-law anymore since she already had the whole of high society in the palm of her hand. She has all the resources she needs, from capital, to authority, to connections. Her mother wanted to let go of the incident with her fiancé and she knew that her mother joined hands with the imperial consort so there was nothing that could stop her mother from ruining them. Their mother wanted them to go back to how they used to and informed Tatiana that in one week, the palace would be hosting a celebratory ball for the empire's conquests. That will be the perfect time to announce the happy news about their engagement. Tatiana asked her mother what would happen if she didn't agree with her, and her mother answered that she would have to leave their house and all that their mother had given to her. The Viscountess had been by her side for as long as she could remember. She was showered with so much love that she was never lonely growing up. It wasn't long before that she realized that her mother was not always gentle and kind, but she had never disliked her or felt ashamed of her no matter what people said. She loved her life. She loved having a strong mother, her beautiful sisters, and all the lavish dresses and jewels. But that was not why she followed her mother's instructions. She sympathized with the difficulties her mother must have faced raising four daughters and a posthumous baby. Tatiana thought it was up to her to appreciate her life. She told herself that even the wrong decisions she made were because she had no other alternative. The maid came into her room to bring her meals as she hadn't eaten for days. Since she couldn't mope around like that, she needed to eat to recharge herself. The maid tried to persuade her to talk to her mother, but she didn't want to do that. Her mother gave her some time to think again and threatened her with her dignity over giving up everything she had. They both knew each other well, so Tatiana could tell that her mother was serious. There was one time when a person who voiced doubts about the circumstances of Tatiana's birth went bankrupt overnight and the newspaper that published Regina's husband's affair disappeared before anyone noticed. Tatiana will stand on her words now, since she can't pretend like nothing's happened. It's been three days since she shut herself in. On the first day, her mother would have frozen her accounts. On the second day, her mother probably cut her off from everyone she knew and on the third day, she didn't remember anyone getting that far. She realized now that the only thing that belonged to her in their house was herself. She looked at the mirror plane without any sparkling jewels or fancy dresses. She knew she owned a lot more than she thought looking at herself. At an art gallery, a man was talking to Tatiana about fine arts and was amazed at how she was well-versed in it. The man adored Tatiana in person and was happy as he accidentally met her and talked about things about art. The man mentioned her engagement, but she denied it as it was just a groundless rumor. The maid was worried for Tatiana, but Tatiana had no other choice as her mother had taken everything from her and she didn't want to ask her sisters for help. The only thing she could do was to turn to her suitors. The maid suggested contacting her sister Regina, who was traveling somewhere, but Tatiana didn't want that as she only had three days left before the banquet that her mother mentioned. She remembered her mother scolding her sister Regina for leaving, but her sister Regina insisted on leaving as she didn't want to affect her youngest sister, Tatiana's engagement because of her bad reputation in marriage. She left with a smile on her face. Tatiana told the maid that her sister Regina would think that she was pathetic since Regina never liked her from the beginning. She and the maid talked about how the man earlier, Marquis Everton, was a good prospect. She was planning to marry him since he was a potential candidate and he was still interested in her. Their next destination was the opera house, which Tatiana was familiar with. The real reason they would go there was to see Count Furzen an opera enthusiast and the other marriage candidate chosen by Tatiana. The Viscountess's grand plan for Tatiana was to be a lady who was more than just pleasing to look at. That was why she had to learn everything from art to history, and even foreign languages and politics. 
Her mother can take all the material things away from Tatiana, but she won't be able to touch the knowledge that she learned since she was young. The maid commented that all the noblemen she was considering were not a match for her, but Tatiana told the maid that it was fine as long as it was not the duke. Tatiana knew the fact that any time she could be kicked out in their house, and the only way a lady could legally leave her family was either through marriage or divorce. She assumed that suitors would be lining up outside her door from tomorrow, and then the whole of Leverin would know. That will be more than enough reason for Duke Atlas to call off the engagement. When that happens, perhaps she will meet someone better suited for her. She was wondering if there was such a thing as a warm, loving household. The next day, news spread out that Tatiana, the belle of high society, was spotted at the opera and that suitors flocked to their mansion. This made the rumors about Tatiana's engagement to be false. Duke Atlas visited the Viscountess complaining about Tatiana's action of seeing different men everywhere, but the Viscountess reminded the Duke about what he also did before their engagement so he has no right to complain like that. Out of anger, the Duke yelled that she shouldn't compare him with the daughter of a Viscount. The Viscountess calmly asked the Duke as to why he was insisting on marrying Tatiana when he found her so inadequate. She noticed that the duke was holding his anger so she let him know that even he was not used to holding back and yet he did because he really wanted to marry her daughter. The viscountess had a smile on her face and the duke realized that the empress's words were true. He was no match for the viscountess right now. The duke backed down and asked the viscountess what to do. There was nothing to be done except for him to settle his situation, said the viscountess. The army of mercenaries called the Black Wolves were talking about the news spreading. They adore how beautiful Tatiana was, but one mercenary was not happy hearing about it and reminded them of what Tatiana did to their captain. He even called Tatiana a witch hiding behind a golden mask, which was heard by their captain. When the crown prince led the imperial conquest in place of the Bedridden Emperor, Kynal Townsend was merely the captain of a small army of mercenaries. Mercenaries who were only motivated by money and yet, Kynal kneeled before the emperor to volunteer himself for the task of rescuing the missing prince. The mercenary got angry as it was a suicide mission for their captain. Their captain was willing to risk his life to save the prince when even the imperial knights copped out. What made him angry the most was that they didn't even supply them any resources. Instead, they throw a measly ball, and their captain is humiliated. Before setting off for Cartman to save the crown prince, Kynal made just one small request and that was to have one dance with the young queen of high society, but the Viscountess publicized Kynal's letter to Tatiana in front of all the eligible bachelors vying for her hand. They mocked their captain for knowing neither shame nor his own father. They tried to stop the angry mercenary, who's named Owen. The other mercenary told Owen that Miss Tatiana didn't do anything and it was all her mother's doing but Owen told the group that the apple didn't fall from the tree. They added that the newspapers said that Tatiana was not getting engaged to Duke Atlas, and they assumed that because her mother was planning to sell her daughter for more money. One mercenary was nervous while he was with the captain and said that he would stop and caution Owen. Their captain didn't say anything, but she remembered the time when Tatiana talked to him for the first time. In Tatiana's room, she was thinking very hard about the celebratory ball that will happen tomorrow evening and that her plan had been going well the past three days. Since the news spread quickly, she was sure that she would be receiving proposals very soon. She was wondering if it would be Marquis Everton or Count Furzen. But she knew that they couldn't possibly have fallen in love with her overnight. She remembered Kynal as the one being sincere towards her. She tried to remember when she first met him and it was raining that day. A banquet was held in the central plaza by the Sart River for the soldiers headed into battle. As an act of goodwill toward the men who might never return, married people were not invited. It was a special banquet for only ladies and knights, where it was tradition for a lady to tie a ribbon on the sword of her chosen knight. Tatiana was 18 years old at that time. Her friends asked her to who she was giving her ribbon to. One lady said that she assumed Tatiana would not be giving her ribbon to anyone since the knights might end up fighting for it. Tatiana told her friends that she might just go home as it was going to rain. 
Before she can leave, one of her friends notices a man in a cloak standing in the corner alone and is not dressed like a knight. The other friend told them that he was from the Black Wolves as they wear black robes like that and added that her brother told her that they were quite a well-known army of mercenaries. The other lady was not happy after hearing that as they were just mercenaries and that they shouldn't let them in as they were commoners. Tatiana defended him as the banquet was their last close-order drill before they left for battle. Everyone participating in that battle has a right to be part of the banquet. Tatiana stared at the man in the cloak and one lady reminded her that she shouldn't pay too much attention to the man as she would be in trouble if the Viscountess found out. It was already raining outside when they decided to leave the banquet. Tatiana bids goodbye to her friends while she waits for her carriage to come. She opened her umbrella and walked in the rain and at the same time, the man in the cloak was also walking behind Tatiana in the opposite direction with his raincoat. Tatiana couldn't stop her curiosity, so she turned around and asked the man if this was his first campaign. When the man looked at her, she was amazed at his beautiful red eyes, just like bright rubies. She offered her umbrella to the man as it was going to rain all night, but he rejected her offer. She insisted on giving him an umbrella as he would freeze to death if Kynel got soaked in that kind of weather and added that it would be a problem if that were going to happen before he could even set out for the battlefield. Kynel made it clear that he was fine and asked her to just leave when a voice was heard from afar calling Tatiana's name. Tatiana untied the ribbon in her hair and wrapped it in the umbrella. She gave it to Kynel and told him that he could not refuse it since it was a lady's right in the banquet, so he must follow the rules. Kynel was stunned by what she said and Tatiana wished him good fortune on the battlefield before she ran into the rain to her carriage. Kynel just stared at her back while running in the rain as she went further and further away from him. The maid who saw Tatiana wet from the rain was shocked as her mother would not be happy about her look. Tatiana took a glance at the area where she talked with Kynel, but he disappeared already. Not long after, she found out who the man she talked to was. He was the disgrace of House Targa and the Black Wolf of the battlefield. He was also the only person to volunteer to rescue the crown prince. And long after, she heard that Kynel had sent her a letter requesting a dance. A maid suddenly bursts inside Tatiana's room informing her that a letter has arrived for her from Marquis Everton. When Tatiana opened and read the letter, it was said that the Marquis could not meet her that day so she ordered her maid to help her get ready to go out. At the art gallery, two men were busy carrying a covered painting and a man ordered them to be careful not to damage it and deliver that thing to his mansion. The Marquis suddenly stopped when he heard a voice from behind. It was Tatiana who interrupted them. The Marquis got panicked as Tatiana knew that a valuable piece landed on him that made him cancel their plans. She uncovered the painting and recognized that it was a Ron Elf from the year 524. She said that he was a court painter of Carmenia that used to belong to the Carmenian royal family, but then it came to Freya when Carmenia became their vassal kingdom. And it directly came to her mother's private collection at the gallery. She also added that it was a rare masterpiece with delicate brush strokes that anyone would want to possess. She asked the Marquis if her mother gave him the painting in exchange for not seeing her. Tatiana had a cold look on her face when the Marquis said that her mother pleaded with him. The Marquis didn't stop there and told Tatiana that she lied to him about her engagement. The Viscountess told him that she would be announcing Tatiana's engagement at the celebratory ball tomorrow. Tatiana got annoyed and said to Marquis that he should have asked her directly if he thought that he was being lied to. She decided to leave before the Marquis could even talk, but before that, she kicked the precious painting, causing it to crash to the ground. The Marquis was her best option. One suitor had hidden himself in a storage house, another was found inebriated, and there was even someone who had fled. It looked like it was going to rain while they were outside and Tatiana's maid was crying as her plan failed. Tatiana got a sad look on her face and questioned herself if she was asking too much. All she wanted was a little bit of loyalty that she never found from Duke Atlas. The maid said that she would call a carriage as it was going to rain. Tatiana asked her maid where they would go, and the maid answered to go back to her home. 
She turned around and asked her maid again if she even had a place to call home. The maid felt sad after hearing that to the point of crying when suddenly a luxurious carriage stopped in front of them. It was the Viscountess, Tatiana's mother, who stepped down the carriage. The Viscountess got off from the carriage. She tried to call her attention by asking if she was waiting for someone or wanted to go somewhere. But she doubts that, she knows that Tiara has no man left to run to. She immediately got Tiara's attention, who was not happy to see her. Tiara glared at her mother. She knew that her mother pleaded with Marquis Everton to stop seeing her. She confronted her, which she did not even deny. The Viscountess reminded her again what she has told, countless times power and money are all that matters. She strokes her palm at her daughter's pretty face, telling her that all she did was she told her suitors to not meet with her. She bought them off in exchange for not meeting her daughter. For her, Tiara is the most prized jewel that should be married to a wealthy and powerful man. And that is Duke Atlas. And, her maid tried to butt in their conversation, but the Viscountess shut her up. She reminded her youngest daughter that she should know by now who she is hurting the most, by doing those things. Viscountess Carchienne had the urge to dismiss and as her maid, but Tiara defended her. The Viscountess brought up again the ball that will happen the next day. She said that things would be different if she turned up to the ball tomorrow with a ring on her finger, referring to her engagement with the Duke. She meaningfully told Tiara that her door was always open before she embarked and left Tiara and end on the street. The rain started pouring. And opened the umbrella to cover Tiara. And was agreeing to the Viscountess. She knew that no one in all of Freya could go against her ladyship. Tiara thinks that her mother is probably right. Her suitors have so much to lose and too much to defend, and it does not help that they fear her mother. She thinks that she was too naive to engage with them, she should have discounted them in the first place. The rain was still dripping when she stepped out from the umbrella. And was clueless, she shouted to where she was heading, because she knew that there was no one left for her to turn to. But Tiara is certain that there is still someone left, so she strode away. At the forest, the man informed his captain, Kynal, that a message had arrived from his residence. The letter contains an urgent request for a meeting from Miss Tatiana Karshien. Even when it was raining, he did not think twice to go and immediately rode his horse. He remembered the first time they met, it was also raining that time when she lent her umbrella to him. He also remembered how the Viscountess fooled him and humiliated him far worse than any words could have done. But that was not the worst of it. He came back to the Karshien's place, wondering if Miss Tatiana had a reply to a letter he gave her. The Viscountess went mad at him and created a lie that Tatiana burned the letter as soon as she saw it. Kynal was shocked after hearing it, it must be painful for him to know it. While riding his horse, he questioned himself even though he knew he would be humiliated, why did he keep going to see her? Will he find the answer if he faces her now? The rain did not stop even when Kynal arrived. Kynal keeps on striding followed by a man informing him that he told Miss Tatiana about his absence, but she insisted on waiting for him. When he opened the door of the room, he saw Tiara there, waiting for him to arrive. Their eyes met, the raindrop still dripping from his wet hair. He was still clueless about what he was hoping to achieve. He offered her a drink. She then suggested that some fire would be nice, since it was still raining. Seems like Tiara did not hear anything, she was still staring at Kynal's face. She remembered those same red eyes. He is the last piece she has, he is her last chance. She had given up everything she had. She only has herself now in this world and has even thrown away her pride. The fire blazed after Kynal set the fire on the fireplace. He now wants Tiara to talk about why she requested an urgent meeting with him. Tiara became direct that she needed him. She confessed that her mother threw her out so she is now no longer a Karshien, and she will stay that way whether she marries him or not. Kynal wondered why her mother would go that far to the extent of throwing away her youngest daughter. Tiara realized that moment when she saw her mother earlier, she thought her desperation was just some immature rebellion. She is sure that even her mother could not sell her away if she is already married. 
Kaimal questioned her why she chose him to get away from her mother. He felt offended, it seemed that he looked like a chump to her who would welcome her with open arms if she turned up in his place uninvited and demanded a marriage. Tiara immediately apologized even though she did not mean to offend him, and it was not her intention. She was flustered when she said she was so desperate that she did not think properly. She was about to take her leave, but before she left, she clarified that she did not come to his place because she thought little of him. She confessed that she just thought of him in her moment of desperation because she thought he would want her. Kainal cannot believe that the well-known Titiana Karshian is lowering herself before him. Before she leaves, she leaves a gold button on her dress to pay him back for the drink he offered a while ago. She said that she does not accept drinks from men that she will not be going to marry. She smiled while saying it before leaving. At the Imperial Palace, the elegance of the ball is evident in the way how they designed it. The guests and the family of Tiara gathered. It was the day when they would announce Tatiana's engagement, so everybody was expecting her to be there, but she was still nowhere to be found. Her elder sister asked their mother about Tiara's whereabouts. The Viscountess answered that Tiara came home in the middle of the night and she left her to sleep in. In the back of her mind, she was certain that she already dealt with all the eligible suitors in Leverin, so there was no one else she could turn to. She did that to make Tiara realize her mistake and crawl back to her mother. Her sisters were already worried since the star of the ball had not arrived yet. She assured them that they still had time before the ball officially started so she had enough time to get ready. But Count Auburden, Anesha's husband, stepped in, saying perhaps you were too impatient with her. Seems like the Viscountess did not like what she heard from her eldest son-in-law, Count Auburden. Count Auburden defended that Tiara is still young and that she must have suffered a great shock from this ordeal, so he thinks that it would be better to give Tiara some time. The Viscountess seems like does not care about whatever he is saying. She swished her fan in front of him and said that she could recall that her daughter Anisia married him when she was a year younger than Tiara is now. And that was because he could not wait any longer. In the middle of their conversation, Marquis Ravani and Marquis Anti arrived. They reported that they heard the Black Wolf would be attending the ball, and their conversation about him began. They doubt what they heard that he is going to be a duke and bet that he will be made a baron at most. The Viscountess recalled the last time she saw the Black Wolf. It was when he came to her house, because he wanted to see her youngest daughter, Tatiana. She irked on the back of her mind, thinking that he was not a pushover back then, either. She recalled where the Black Wolf came from. He was related to Marquis Targa. It was a huge scandal that swept high society when the unmarried Lebeline Targa gave birth to a child 26 years ago. But she died during childbirth, and the fatherless boy became the disgrace of House Targa. The Viscountess does not care what title he will be given as a reward for saving the Crown Prince as long as he does not get involved with her Tatiana. She smirked, she thought it was a good thing that she taught him his place three years ago. They made fun of him, mocked him in their useless conversation, and involved how he was humiliated three years ago. It was the time when the Karshian mansion was being flooded with love letters addressed to Tatiana. Although he was the captain of a promising army of mercenaries, that man was made an example of by the Viscountess for coveting her daughter. The way she humiliated him publicly was cruel. He was scorned and ridiculed. It was a public execution without bloodshed. Along the way, it was revealed that he was more than just a commoner turned mercenary, from the slums. Their conversation about him and his disgrace to his family went on, some guests would glance at them, hearing who they were talking about. People would murmur their thoughts, seems like the hall was already talking about him. One of her sons-in-law diverted the subject of their conversation to Tiara. Their conversation about Kynal finally ended. The Viscountess reminded them that Duke Atlas would be arriving with His Majesty soon. She smirked as she summarized her plans. Duke Atlas will motion for Tatiana to join him at his side, as his future duchess. Then all the eyes of high society will be on her daughter. At the outskirts of Leverin, Kynal was there. He just arrived at that place when an old woman approached him. They went inside her house, the old woman knew why he came again to her place. 
she praised how he had grown into such a fine young man. She tried to open the subject about Lady Lebeline, Kynel's mother, but he cut her words off. Telling that he does not care about someone dead already. Then the old woman asked what brought him to her place this time, she knew that Kynel would come to see her every time he faced an important decision. She recalled that the last time he came there unannounced was just before he went to save the highness, the crown prince. She tried to stop Kynel at that time. But this time, the old woman said that she was not going to dissuade him. Kynel froze, he did not expect her to say something like that even though he had not said anything on his mind yet. She added that he should do as he pleases, at least once in his life. And he deserves to live his life the way he wants. At the Karshian mansion, Tatiana was preparing for the ball. She was wearing an elegant black dress. And got frightened when she saw her wearing a black dress for the engagement announcement. But she seems she does not care at all. For her, her dress is perfect. Just do what your heart wills, Master Kynel, Mrs. Hart said. But Kynel just said that he never wants anything. He recalled how badly he wanted a certain watch when he was younger. He badly wants to buy that watch, but he has to use all the money he has saved up to pay Mrs. Hart's hospital bill after she got into a carriage accident. There was not any particular reason why he wanted that watch, seems like his heart was just drawn to it. But if he had owned the watch and seen for himself that it was worthless, he could have moved on without any regrets. Just like now, if he had a chance to see for himself why he was drawn to Tatiana, then he might not have had any more regrets. At Karshian's mansion, and, the maid, insists that she could escort Tatiana to go to the ball. But the lovely Tatiana refused. Tatiana thinks she is a useless person who cannot even take care of her own maid. And she only realized now that she hurt someone years ago without her knowledge. She then recalled what happened years ago when she heard the rumors about what her mother had done. He was sorry for Kynel, but he disliked the pity he had seen from her. He gritted his teeth, he did not need that pity. He was offended upon realizing that Tatiana thinks a little of him. He gazed at her full of hatred. That gaze full of hatred, those harsh words of rejection she has never heard before, and those red eyes burning with rage and mortification, are the treatment she has never felt before. She thought that he would still look at her in the same way and that he would still have feelings for her. Perhaps she really did think too little of him because he had nothing to lose or to protect. She should never have come to him, no matter how desperate she was. They have just arrived at the ball. Every maid was bowing to her and one of them informed her that her family was waiting for her. She gripped the box of the ring when she realized that Duke Atlas was also waiting. She closed her eyes telling herself that there was no turning back before she proceeded at the entrance of the ball. Everyone was shocked seeing her in that black dress, knowing that they were announcing her engagement. Tatiana does not care at all. She thinks that she has done everything she can and gone as far as she can go, so there is nothing left. As she entered the hall, the guests could not believe she was wearing a black dress, they would glance at her and murmur. Her dress might be beautiful, but they are obviously criticizing her. Even Duke Atlas was not happy to see her in that dress. But she does not care at all. She was emotionless as she walked. Her mother tried to welcome and greet her gleefully, but Tiara's emotion did not even change. As she spoke, she said to her mother that she had thought long and hard about whether she had the right to criticize her mother. And she thinks that it is enough time to think that she does have a right to do that. The Viscountess was shocked to hear her youngest daughter talking back to her. Tiara said that she has lived her life according to her rules. Her act is already creating a scene and all the guests witnessing it, so Duke Atlas yells at her, asking her to come to him. But Tiara did not listen to him, she was still facing her mother when she passed her the box of the engagement ring. She said that her pain will not ever go away, and she will never be able to remedy that pain she has inflicted on someone else either. She was referring to Kynel, the one her mother humiliated years ago. She said that she still has a chance to stop herself from turning into her mother, she does not want to have any regrets. All eyes and ears are on them. The Viscountess warned her that she should think carefully because there is nothing she can do for her from this point on. 
In the middle of their conversation, people heard footsteps proceeding, it drew some attention and made them shocked upon seeing who it was. Even Tatiana could not believe that Kynal had come. He walked towards Tatiana. Their gaze is locked only on each other, they do not mind what people say, seems like they are not hearing their murmurs about them. Tatiana cannot believe that he really came to the ball. Kynal extended his hand to lend something to Tiara, he thought that he should return the golden button of her dress, which she used to pay him for the drinks she gave when she came to his place uninvited. Kynal said that he does not think there is any need for them to exchange such things. Tiara was confused about what he was saying and doing. He clarified that he does not want to be a man that she needs to pay back. Tiara reached for the golden button. As she reached it, Kynal clasped his hands on her. Everyone saw how he held her hand and how Tiara let him do that. They were so malicious to think that it was a big deal, because they were supposed to witness the engagement of Duke Atlas with Tiara instead of seeing her held by the other man. Duke Atlas did not expect to see that, the Viscountess almost passed out, and Her Majesty was mad. The controversy was all over the newspaper. It says that the Queen of High Society chooses a hero over the Duke. At the Karshien's mansion, everyone would hear and feel the rage of Viscountess Karshien. Their mother slammed her hand on the table. She saw what was written in the article and that added fuel to the fire of her madness. She exclaimed that she never passed out, she even barely closed her eyes during that time. She even cursed the name of the black wolf, saying that how dare he think that he can marry her daughter. Her daughters tried to console her, but her sons-in-law were both hesitant to meddle and got nervous. Anesha tried to calm her down and informed her that every reporter in Leverin was waiting outside their mansion and they did not want to give them any more gossip to write about when they heard them talking like that. The Viscountess could not stop, she kept on yelling. She still could not believe that her youngest daughter could think of marrying Kynal, whom she referred to as an animal. She assumed that Kynal must have coaxed her because he wanted her, and he knew that he could not have her. She chose to believe her unreliable assumptions that they were the reason why Tatiana turned against her. She put all the blame on Kynal and did not even think that it was her fault after all. Tatiana is the most obedient among her five daughters, the most beautiful, the most ladylike, the most in everything. While complaining about everything, Count Auburden reported another problem, Duke Atlas would be lodging a formal complaint soon and he doubted that the imperial consort would keep quiet. Viscountess Karshien clenched her fist upon hearing it. She gritted her teeth while listening to Count Auburden's report about their upcoming problems. He also informed that they also have a trading company to worry about, as well as how the bank will react. Viscountess Karshien, coming up with the solutions, claimed that she knew the consort never kept quiet and Duke was not in a position to complain to her and if their trading company cannot even withstand this small problem, then it deserves to be knocked down. And as for the bank, she ordered them to withdraw all her money if they would say another word. She asked if there were any problems, but they just remained silent. But seems like their problems never ended at this time when Count Auburden called her name again. She brushed her hair with her fingers and assured everyone that they could set things right, one by one. She ordered them to summon their lawyers and get ready to leave. Then everyone leaves the room. The sisters were worried about their situation. Who would know Tiara would do such a thing and choose the black wolf of all people? One of the sisters claimed that she was certain it was the face of the black wolf that made Tiara do it. But Anesha refused. On the back of her mind, she is certain that the marriage could not happen, but she could not stop the marriage by herself. At the black wolf's training ground, they were completely utterly disturbed when they heard the news. They saw it in an article, and they could not believe that their captain would do such things like that. The news became the noise of the town and it already reached the training ground of the mercenaries. Kynal's troop questioned why their captain would get married to that woman. They want to understand what is happening. The papers are making it sound like it is the love story of the century. They cannot believe what is in the article, to such an extent that they think of busting up the newspaper company if the news turns out to be false. They were surprised when they heard their captain questioning them about how this concerned any of them. 
he does not see why he owes any of them an explanation. They were shocked when they realized that it was true based on what their captain had said. Kynal asked them if they had some valid reason why he could not marry Tiara. Owen, one of the mercenaries, asks if he is serious about that woman. He then glared at his captain, the two persons on his back were nervous about the way he questioned the decision of Kynal, he seemed like he had forgotten he was yelling at their captain. He is not done yet, he scolded that he just knew those two witches were up to no good and had an assumption that they were trying to sabotage his chances of becoming a duke. He even scowled and roared about the ball being called off after what happened and yet he does not even get his title, he blamed it was the evil Viscountess. That she just cannot bear to see Kynal become a noble. He kept on nagging and became an ear sore to everyone. Their captain ordered them to take him away from him. So, his comrades drag him away, but seems like his nagging is unstoppable. Owen did not stop nagging, he even doubted the beauty of Tiara. He was about to say that Tiara could not be that pretty, but he took it back immediately when she suddenly appeared in front of him. He was shocked when he saw her. Tiara was like a goddess. Everyone in there adored her beauty. Tiara came to visit Kynal, her fiancé. She strode closer to him. Kynal was concerned that Tiara heard their conversation a while ago. Tiara seems to have heard them, but she does not mind, and she guessed it would not be the first time. They went to the room where they could talk privately. Kynal asked her what brought her all the way there. Kynal remembered Tatiana asked him to give her some time to think, so he asked her if she was already regretting her decision. But Tiara said no, and told him that she had a favor to ask. She hesitated to tell her concern at first, but she still managed to talk about Anne, her maid, she was left there, at their home. She would like to bring Anne with her. Kynal let her bring her maid with her. Tiara stared at him, she could not believe that he agreed right away. She was expecting that it would be hard for her to convince Kynal, but it turned out to be easier than she expected. Tiara is still in awe of his sudden approval of her request when Kynal asks him if there is something else. He asked if the butler was not doing his job properly because he told him to get everything for her needs. Tiara realized that he was not coming home when she noticed that he only asked her to prepare everything that she needed. Kynal was taken aback he asked what she needed him for. Deafening silence enveloped them when Tiara asked about their marriage. He just replied that it takes a while to prepare for that. He sighed when he realized that it was going to be a lot of work. But Tiara demanded that she would like to get married in three days. Kynal was astounded by her revelation, he did not expect that she wanted their marriage to happen so soon. Tiara seemed already thought about this deeply when she gleefully asked him if he was free after three days. Tiara asked him if he was free on Friday, their wedding day. She knew it sounded so soon, but that Friday was the last day for them. Kynal questioned what she meant by that. She explained that it was the last day that they could have their marriage approved by the Supreme Temple. Kynal knew that it could not be the only day the Supreme Temple was open. It made him more confused by what she meant. Tiara knew that her mother would sabotage their marriage, and she was expecting that it would take her around five days to influence the archbishop who would be responsible for their marriage's approval. Kynal said that he thought God was fair to all, and Tatiana agreed, but she also said that the archbishop was only human, so he will eventually take her mother's offer, and it will take around five days. And there is more. Tiara is certain that all the dress shops and jewelry will be closed to them, her mother would have bought them out or rented them whole. The same goes for flower shops and catering services, they would not have access to anything. Her mother will be inviting the archbishop to the Karshian Villa in Varsha, because there is a famous hot spring there, ideal for people with back problems like him. And the trip there is likely to last at least a month. She asked Kynal's opinion of getting married on Friday. Kynal smiled as he realized that it was finally sinking in that he was marrying a Karshian. And that does not sound like a compliment to Tiara, though. Tiara told him that she did not need a lavish wedding, she just needed it to be enough to get legal recognition. But Kynal knew that she was planning to do a lavish wedding until recently, but he didn't say it. Looking at Tatiana, he finally agreed to do it her way. 
After they discussed their wedding, they decided to go. Tiara became considerate to Kynal when she said that they could postpone their wedding if he thinks Friday seems so soon, he should not hesitate to speak his mind. Tiara then called her husband to be by his name. When he faced her, she sincerely said she was sorry. Kynal was confused about what she was sorry for. Tiara tried to bring up the topic about three years ago, but Kynal immediately stopped her. She also mentioned that the reason why she agreed to marry him was because she knew that he was only interested in her appearance. Kynal froze for a moment, he did not expect her to say that. While they were striding away, Kynal's comrades followed their sight on them. They still could not believe the beauty that Tiara possessed. They were comparing her to a statue of a goddess in the temple, but the other one but in, he said that those statues were modeled by her. Kynal and his secretary were in his office. His secretary was reporting to him that he ordered the butler at his house to hire some more staff to serve the new lady of the house. He also reported Kynal's schedule for that week. Kynal's mind was flying somewhere else. He was thinking about Tiara. She was like the watch he used to like, but he could not have. He recalled how she apologized a while ago. For him, apologizing does not suit her. He should not overthink this, but seems he already does. She was the one who came to him, and she did not plan to back out. And the same goes for him. He ordered to clear his schedule for Friday. His secretary insisted that they must leave on that day, but he paused for a moment when his captain said about his wedding. He could not believe what he heard, he was astounded when he confirmed that he did not hear it wrong. At the Townsend mansion, and already arrived, she was teary-eyed when she saw Tiara in good condition. She was worried after receiving a false rumor that everyone was saying that she had been stolen away by the devil and left to die. And she reported that out of nowhere, she was abducted, and it terrified her. And scowled how horrified she was that she could kill that orange-haired one if she ever saw him again. She reported that he hurled her into a carriage like she was some kind of baggage. She feared that she was headed to her death and that she would never see her again. Tiara recalled whom she was referring to. That orange-haired one at the training ground of her soon-to-be husband. She remembered that she ordered them to bring in to her, but she did not know they would use brute force. Tiara pitted and so she asked her if she did not want to stay there, she could try to find her somewhere else to work. But and insisted that she was going to stay right by her side. Tiara reminded her, that she needs to realize that she is no longer a Karshien that she used to serve to. Even though Tatiana is no longer a Karshien, and is determined to stay by Miss Tatiana's side after her master offered that she could try to find her somewhere else to work. Miss Tatiana became so important to her. She does not care what anyone else could say. Miss Tatiana was taken aback by what she said, but she still managed to involve her mother in an sweet message and jolted and said that she was more scared of Tatiana than her mother, and roamed her side around the place. She noticed that this place was too old a mansion which does not even have proper furniture. She never thought that Miss Tatiana would live in that kind of place. She was sad that Lady Tatiana would not have had to come to that place if they had a little more time. That place is more different from where she used to live, but, this would be her only option regardless of how much time they had. No one would offer her a helping hand without getting bought by her mother except for him, Kynal. And became curious to that guy about what he was like. For Tatiana, he is neither a knight nor a gentleman, he is not like anyone she ever met before, but he is the only person who took her hand when she reached out for help. That made him a decent man. But since then, he just left Tatiana at his mansion on her own. She has not seen much of him, except when she went to see him at his training grounds. She was expecting him to come and see her by now, but he had not been home once. She questioned why he brought her there if he would just be going to neglect her. She recalled the time when he said that he once harbored an interest in her because he was only after her appearance, nothing else. She also even heard what he has said when she went to his training ground. He said that he expects nothing of the kind from her. How ironic that everyone who wanted something out of her has turned their backs, but the person who does not want anything from her has taken her hand. 
She was so thankful for him and what he has done is all that matters to her now. The butler went to bring her some tea. Based on him, the tea is from Teak. Tatiana thanked the butler for serving the tea but when she was about to drink the tea, she paused and noticed something. According to the butler, he asked for the premium grade from the department store in Bachman because he believes afternoon tea is a must in the life of a prestigious family. Even though their captain has yet to receive his title, they must still make sure to uphold his honor in this household. And noticed that there was something wrong with the tea, she was about to report it to Tatiana, but she noticed that Lady Tatiana remained calm, so she just said that the tea had an impressive aroma. The butler was happy to hear that Tatiana liked the tea and on the other hand, Tatiana said to herself that there was something she could be of help with. Tatiana smiled back at the butler and noticed that the tea he was referring to was just a low-grade replica of the real tea, but she did not complain. At the royal villa, Kynal is having a cup of tea with the Viscountess. They prepared a fine tea from Teak. She bragged that her eldest son-in-law, Count Auberden, owns a tea plantation in Teak. Kynal said that she doesn't need to do all of that. She is playing host in the royal villa as if it is her own, Kynal thought. The Viscountess began to talk about Tatiana, and how careful she was about socializing with other people in front of her youngest daughter, she even taught her that it was improper for ladies to meet with those outside of the gentry. Kynal just let the Viscountess talk. She knew that illegitimate children required a guarantor to get married, so she was sure that Kynal would be requesting an audience with the prince. She asked him how the prince was doing. Kynal was just listening to her, and she added that she was certain that the prince was more than happy to play as a guarantor for the one who saved his life. The Viscountess thinks that it is the inconvenience of having no father, but Kynal just simply answered that he never thought of it as an inconvenience. She knew that Kynal would come to see his highness as well as his reason. In the end, she gets to her point. The Viscountess glared at him to show how she despised him and said that she didn't approve of their marriage. The law might approve, but she certainly does not. Which means he has nothing to gain from this marriage. On the other hand, she has much to take from him. A mischievous smirk formed from her lips as if she were planning something. She then showed Kynal an envelope that contained the deeds of the Targa mansion. Kynal was astounded that they had that document from the family of her mother. The Viscountess is willing to compensate him through that mansion but Kynal straightforwardly declined her offer. He has never been interested in that place and let the Viscountess do whatever she wants in that mansion. She thought it would take a little of his interest, especially after the way Kynal was shunned by Marquis Targa. She then opened up on the topic of his nobility. She knew that he would be receiving a new title that would change the rank of his life. However, true nobility comes from people's recognition, not the title itself. Kynal didn't have the slightest interest and just asked what she was trying to say. The Viscountess said that she is willing to become his foothold where she can forge connections for him befitting his new title. She proposed that she could make him into the noblest of noblemen, comparable to one from a family with a thousand-year history. Of all the interesting proposals she have said, Kynal chose to pretend that he did not hear all of them. The Viscountess sighed, she failed to convince this man. The Viscountess composed herself. She wondered if this was his way of getting back at her. If it is, she understands, he has reason enough to hate her. She asked if he wanted to see her kneel, but Kynal remained silent. She admits that she went too far three years ago, but she did not bring it up to apologize. She would do the same thing, so what is the use of apologizing? She stated the full name of her youngest daughter. Tatiana Lauren de Carchien. She is her only daughter who bears her maiden name. She revealed that everyone was suspicious about who her father was. She wanted to make sure that even though she was not welcome into the Carchien household, she would still hold the name Lauren and live on with all the pride in the world. She added that she had poured her soul into Tatiana and gave her everything she could so she doesn't care at all about hurting him as she will pay for it in the afterlife. The Viscountess is certain that he understands how harsh people can be when it comes to origin and bloodline. When he admits that he is, she commands him to let go of her daughter. For her, as her mother, 
Tatiana was too young to remember the disdain from her childhood, but she will not forget the finger pointing that is about to come. She does not know how long her frail daughter would last if that happened. Kainal suggested her to watch. The Viscountess was shocked and confused by what he said. Kainal said that she has great affection for her daughter, so he is sure she will keep watching over her. He stood and was ready to leave. Seems like he got on the Viscountess's nerves, by what he said. He announced to her that they would be getting married. The Viscountess paused for a moment, while processing the possible reason why he still wants to marry her daughter, after everything she have said. She gritted her teeth when she thought that maybe he loved her. She exclaimed that if he loved her daughter, that was all the reason why he should let her go. She even questioned how he could think of dragging his loved one down into the depths of misery. Kynal only smiled at her upon realizing that she was still clueless. He stated that her daughter was willing to marry a man who did not even love her and added that was how desperate her daughter was. I guess I do not love your daughter enough to save her from a life of misery. Kynal apathetically said in front of the mother of her fiancé. The Viscountess was astounded by what she heard. She trembled in anger when she shouted his name. She threatened him, which made him pause from leaving, she said that she had dozens of ways to knock down her mercenary band. But Kynal told her that she could do as she pleased, provided she could set foot on his land. The Viscountess was confused and asked what he meant. Kynal explained that instead of becoming a duke that no one would recognize, he requested autonomy of his land and his highness has already given him his approval. He left the villa, leaving the Viscountess in distress. She gritted her teeth, she was left with no choice but to expel Tatiana from House Karshien. It has been a while since the last time that Tatiana went outside. People saw and recognized her, they were murmuring and obviously, they were talking about her. It was just a normal day for Tatiana and Anne. Her maid suggested her beautiful jewelry, but Tatiana refused because she knew that the butler had prepared everything that she needed for the wedding, from the dresses to jewelry. And thought of them as piles of garbage. She commented how awful they were and questioned how they could even offer her such things. And was still complaining about how horrendous those things were when she heard some murmurs from the people. Tatiana can feel those hostile eyes on her. She thought it was still too soon for her to go outside when she suddenly noticed a face that was familiar to her. She tried to escape when Tatiana saw her, but she followed her as she knew it was Aileen, her friend. When Tatiana reached her, she was hesitant to face her and observe her surroundings first. Tatiana then concluded that she was avoiding her on purpose. Tatiana was used to other people snubbing her, but she did not expect a friend she had known for over a decade will treat her like that. After asking Tatiana if she went out shopping, she made an excuse that she would be late for her meeting with Rebecca, who used to be mean to her. Tatiana was about to caution her from Rebecca, but Aileen suddenly got angry and yelled at her saying to not pretend like she was concerned about her. She exclaimed that everyone knew her situation now, but Tatiana was clueless about what specific situation she was referring to. Aileen managed to express her dissatisfaction towards Tatiana. She even included how Tatiana would throw dresses at her out of charity. That life is so easy for her because she lives like a princess. For Aileen, that is why Tatiana can throw everything away and marry the black wolf. Aileen thinks that she is no one if she does not cling to someone like Rebecca, unlike her, where she can choose who she wants to be with. Tatiana got a serious look on her face and just agreed with everything Aileen had said. Her conversation with Aileen made her realize that she made the right choice. While striding along the street, she can hear some people whispering and she is aware that they are talking about her. She emotionlessly passes them, but and feels bad for her master. For Tatiana, they are all curious yet unsympathetic. She saw a newspaper and read what was written in the article. It was about Kynal Townsend denying his love for Tatiana Karshien. Tatiana smiled and thought that he was the only one who was true to himself. On that afternoon, when they arrived in front of the Townsend mansion, she saw a carriage that she recognized, it was from House Aberdeen. Tatiana was shocked to see her older sister, Anesha, beside the carriage. Tatiana ordered and to leave them. 
She was hesitant at first, but she still obeyed her order. Anesha dashed when she saw her, and she was even more worried when she noticed the changes in her face and her dress. Tatiana asked her sister if she visited her, just to say such things. Anesha courageously said to come with her and offered that she could stay at their villa until everything settled down. She also added that her other sisters would take care of the papers and the gossip so she had nothing to worry about. It was a soothing offer from her sister, but Tiara chose to refuse her. Tears formed in her eyes when she heard her sister rejecting her, she knew that she was still mad at them. She begged their tiara and pleased her to come with her as they would take care of everything. She even promised that everything would work out but Tatiana had a sad face saying that her sister was acting just like her mother. She admits that she was mad at them and maybe up to recently but the reason why she does not want to leave is because she has come to realize how painful and miserable it is when the one you trust turns their back on you. She doesn't want to be that kind of person and do the same thing to Kynal. She does not want to turn her back on him whom she dragged into her situation. Anesha tried harder to convince her and even included what was written in the newspaper where Kynal denied his love for Tatiana. But she said that her sisters have always told her that they love her but still betrayed her. They want Tatiana to marry the Duke. Tatiana is aware that they want that to happen because they think she will have an easy life with him. After all, he does not have any siblings to fight over the inheritance with. Anesha pleased her again but before Tatiana left, she said that she has never resented having four sisters even though she is mad at Anesha for what she did to her. She left Anesha alone after saying that. After what happened, she recalled how Anesha tried to convince her to come with her, she admits that she was almost tempted. In the middle of her thought, someone suddenly arrived and called her by her name. Kynal immediately went to Tatiana when he heard that her sister Anesha had come. He asked if she was trying to run away with her, but Tatiana covered her up by saying she came because she missed her. Tatiana smiled at the thought of how she would run away if she had nowhere to go. Kynal opposed it and told her that his home was her home now. Tatiana couldn't believe what he said and agreed that she did have a home now. Kynal reminded her that she was the one who came to him asking for marriage, but she had that kind of look on her face just because her sister showed up. He sighed and silently said that he wouldn't know something unless she told him. Tatiana was just staring at him and suddenly said that she saw the newspaper. She told him that he was more famous than her now, but at the back of her mind, it was better that he did not love her so he would not have any reason to resent her. She added that she did not expect her mother that she will meet him and she knew what her mother must have said to him. Tatiana could not look him in the eye because she was worried about the meeting he had with her mother and might decide not to marry her. However, Kynal directly tells her that he will marry her. When she looked at him, he repeated what he said and told her again that he would marry her. She thought that he was always so steadfast. They also talked about what it is like to marry someone like her where he will find himself at the center of attention, but Kynal seems fine with the inconvenience on his private life that it may cause. She reminded that they will not have any help or protection because she is no longer a Karshian but Kynal exclaimed that he never wished she was a Karshian. She was astonished as she heard that. She also noticed that he came wearing his muddy armor, which made her smile as she knew he must have rushed to her without even having a chance to change his clothes. She told him that he might end up in a worse situation, but Kynal said that he would not allow that to happen. Tatiana warned him to not lower his guard down as there may be reporters hiding somewhere in their place at that moment. She told him that she was more experienced in what to do in that kind of situation and that was to show them how things were between them. Kynal got her point and suddenly grabbed her back and told her that it was time to give them the show. Tiara was shocked by his sudden kiss, but she then closed her eyes and kissed him back. She thought that Kynal wanted her even though he didn't love her. The couple wed in the shabby annex of the Townsend Mansion with no grand wedding or lavish reception befitting a noble lady. They had a priest to officiate it and the utterance of marriage vows. It was just a wedding for the sake of being wed. The members of the Black Wolves were the only guests present. They were crying, it was hard for them to believe that their goddess is truly the wife of another man now, and that man is their captain.
she is now a Mrs. Townsend. Some members of the mercenary band stated what they have done to show their admiration for the beauty of the goddess like Tatiana Karshien by collecting her posters and calendars and going to the temple to see the angels that were modeled after her. Owen does not seem pleased by her beauty. He got annoyed after hearing them. He said that beauty is not everything in a woman. The vice captain apologized on behalf of other members who were talking about Tatiana as they found it hard to believe that she got married to their captain. But Kynel was not listening to him and was just staring at her wife while she was talking with the priest. Even he questioned himself if he did really marry her. He remembered that day when he immediately went after Tatiana after and informed him that Countess Auburden had come. He had a suspicion that she would take her away. On that same day, they shared a kiss and he wondered if she also remembered that moment. At their reception, Tatiana was accommodating their guest. They could not believe that the one they were admiring from afar was standing in front and talking to them. Tatiana generously thanked them for coming to their simple wedding. When she noticed that orange-haired man, she asked for his name and he rudely answered her saying that it was Owen. Tatiana was just staring at him and the maid was already annoyed. Owen was about to say something rude to her when whoever's palm suddenly closed his mouth to shut him up and dragged him away. Before leaving, she told them that she knew how important their captain was to them, so she would do her best not to make them worry. The vice captain couldn't also believe that Miss Tatiana was married now. Looking at her back, he noticed that her dress didn't seem appropriate for her. Tatiana was sitting awkwardly on the bed in Kynel's room. She wandered her eyes around his room only to conclude that he really had led a different life from her. Suddenly, she visualized the kiss they shared that day. She didn't know she could be that bold. She touched her lips as if she were still feeling his lips against her. She shook her head to remove that thought and reached the paper she saw. When suddenly, her husband, Kynel, entered the room. Kynel asked his wife if she was all right, he was worried about how Owen acted to her. He said that Owen is just like that, but he will not be condoning what he said. Tatiana assured her that it was just fine and let him be. He asked if she was fine with that and Tatiana answered that she couldn't do anything about it as he was not the only one who hated her. Kynel was confused as to why would anyone hate her and that made Tatiana speechless. She knew that no one could do anything about other people's feelings. Like how her mother feels about him. He told her that her mother was her family so he didn't fight her and that was what Owen was like. She was accepting Owen as a part of him like how he accepted her mother as her family. Kynel smiled when he realized that she was more understanding than he thought and wiser than she seemed. Tatiana was astonished when she saw him smile at her, it was like the first time. She was just staring at her husband, thinking in her mind that he looked like the perfect gentleman, the way he dressed in his simple dress suit. Kynel caught her staring and it made him conscious about how he looked. He explained that he looked terrible as he didn't have time to prepare properly. He added that the wedding is already over and they made a vow before a priest so there is no going back now. Tatiana knew that he looked great but she didn't want to say it so she changed the topic by showing off a piece of paper. It was a prenuptial agreement that was normally signed before the wedding but they did not have enough time to do it. Kynel scanned through the agreement and Tatiana told him that she had already shown that to the priest, which can be registered after he agreed to the terms. Kynel asked about what was the twice about intimacy and she answered that it was per month, which Kynel questioned. She told him that it was normally what nobles do for various reasons. She continued to say that intercourse was only to produce an heir and everyone finds other ways to enjoy themselves. Kynel couldn't understand why others found other ways to do that when he already had his wife. Tatiana was confused, but he didn't push the topic so he just asked for the blank space, which Tatiana left on purpose in case he had anything he wanted to ask of her. But Kynel is more concerned if she has anything she wants to ask of him. Tatiana answered while looking him in his eyes that she wanted him to be faithful to her and would not tolerate him being associated with another woman. Before she could continue to speak, Kynel leaned to kiss her and pulled her waist closer to him. Tatiana was stunned by his sudden action, but she eventually closed her eyes to accept that kiss. 
he lifted Tatiana like how a groom carries his bride. In the middle of the night in the Townsend mansion, Kynel was carrying his wife to bed which he noticed had a fever. Tatiana is not aware of it and thinks that the room is a little warm. Kynel touched her face and said that he would prove his claim through a kiss. Her hands were trembling and shaking, so he convinced her to sleep. Tatiana didn't want to sleep as it was their first night as a married couple, but Kynel told her that despite those rumors out there, he was not that much of a best. Kynel lies beside her when Tatiana speaks about not deducting what happened to them earlier from the twice-a-month intimacy in their contract and forgives him for ordering her around. She was about to say something when she just dozed off to sleep. He just watched her while she was sleeping and said to himself how generous she was befitting a Karshien. At House Atlas, Alexei explodes his anger by breaking their stuff at home because he heard the news about Tatiana's wedding which made him furious. His aunt Charlize could not stand his appalling behavior and shouted at him to stop. Alexei clenched his trembling fist in anger. He was complaining and couldn't believe that Tatiana was really married to another man. His aunt couldn't believe it as well since she thought Tatiana was a gentle little girl, but she outplayed her own mother. Alexei was worried about the effects on his name of Tatiana's decision to choose a bastard instead of a duke. His aunt tried to calm him down by saying that the gossip would die down soon enough, but Duke Atlas could not just relax because of the thought that Kynel was now the hero of the empire for saving the crown prince's life. She thought that it was bad enough for the crown prince, Rainer, to return home early and get a faithful dog like the Crimson Eyed Death guarding him. For her, it would have been better if he just died on the battlefield. The Empress passed away moments after giving birth to the crown prince, Rainier. When the emperor fell ill during the young prince's late teenage years, Rainier was forced out of the capital and onto the battlefield, for the imperial consort's influential background was enough to expel the young prince whose mother had been of insignificant birth. The nonchalant prince seemed to accept his fate and led the empire's conquests, and he survived many brushes with death in his twenty-odd years on the front lines. But as he reached his forties, his absence in the capital weakened his position in the imperial household. He had no in-laws to count on, nor any alliances within the aristocracy. Meanwhile, Charlie strengthened her position as the imperial consort and to be used by her frail son in the future. While the emperor was lying in his sickbed for many years, the Freya Empire was already seen in the hands of House Atlas. For the young son of the imperial consort to get the seat of the crown prince, he needed the connections and wealth of House Karshien and the resourcefulness and charisma of the Viscountess. And the perfect solution to do that was to marry Duke Atlas to the youngest daughter of the Viscountess. Alexei said that all the noble houses that went in the imperial conquests favored the crown prince to be the next emperor, but Charlize will not let that happen. But seems like how the Black Wolf already conquered every there is to conquer will become a hindrance to their plans. The Crown Prince is also particularly fond of Kynel since he was the one who saved his life. Aunt Charlize gritted her teeth and slammed the table while shouting how big the mess Duke Atlas made while pointing her finger at him. Alexei claimed that there was no use in pointing fingers at him now. He was blaming Tiara for being so high and mighty that never even let him touch her, he would not have looked elsewhere if Tiara had just slept with him. Aunt Charlize asked about his meeting with the Viscountess, he reported that the Viscountess denied having a daughter named Tatiana. Aunt Charlize was not surprised by Larissa Lauren de Carchien's action. She has known her for trading her daughters to climb the social ladder. But even though Larissa disowned Tatiana, they must still compensate them for the damages they suffered. Her other plan is to still arrange the marriage of her nephew with a more reputable family this time. Alexei despised that idea because he still wanted Tatiana. He claimed that Tatiana was him from the start. But her aunt Charlize is determined to pursue that plan and refuses to listen to his complaints. She wouldn't allow Alexei to let a divorced woman into their esteemed family, so she told him that she would be arranging his marriage to a distinguished family that House Karshien can't even be compared with. At the outskirts of Leverin, the band of Kynel's mercenaries was fighting a bunch of monsters. The monster screeched in pain at Kynel's sword and lifelessly fell to the ground. The band cheered on that victory. 
They are on their mission, but Kynel's mind is on Tatiana and that ridiculous prenuptial agreement. He was really opposed to twice a month of intimacy, so he rather chose to slay monsters than to wait. When he thought about their first night, he couldn't help but smile since it wasn't that bad after all. While he was in the middle of his thoughts, his lieutenant came to him to inform something. They talked about the dress Tatiana was wearing during their wedding. He told Kynel that even though they told the butler to tend to Tatiana's needs, it seemed that her attire looked different and there were many better quality items that she should have worn. He added that the lady of the house usually takes care of everything related to the household so he suggested putting Tatiana in charge of the household since she is now married to Kynel, but it isn't mandatory and it requires some mutual understanding between the couple. Kynel had a thought that if he put Tatiana in charge of the household, she would be too busy to have second thoughts about leaving him which made him have a smile on his face. At the Townsend mansion, Tatiana woke up and suddenly got up. It was Tatiana's first morning of being Mrs. Townsend. She remembered that she got married to Kynel yesterday and didn't have to worry about changing his mind now. He also can't throw her now, since she's already Tatiana Townsend. She was still thinking about the things after their marriage yesterday and her sleep last night when the newly hired maids came to her room and she couldn't recognize any of them. They reminded her that her breakfast was already ready at the dining hall. Kynel left early in the morning so he could not join her at the dining. And asked how she was feeling because she noticed that she was sick yesterday. Tatiana answered that she was fine, but then scolded her for being oblivious to her own condition. She assured her that she was all right and recalled what happened between her and Kynel last night. And complained about the butler for not letting her wait on her and asked Tatiana if she could have a word with him about this matter. She wants to be by her side since she is the only one who knows Tatiana better than anyone else in the house. But before she agreed, she reminded and to stop addressing her as a miss. While having her breakfast, she talked with the butler. They talked about Kynel. He reported that Kynel will be returning in about two weeks. He added that Leverin was safe from monsters because of his master. After hearing that, Tatiana realized that she still did not know much about Kynel. He is always busy and would often be away because it is part of his duty. In the middle of their conversation, the maid served the tea which the butler assumed that she enjoyed last time. He added that it was another type of tea from the Teak region. Tatiana knew how difficult to get that kind of tea from the Teak region. When the butler heard that, he assured Tatiana that it was his duty to get the best quality. When Tatiana asked if what he was talking about was Loika, he agreed. Tatiana got a serious look, but she didn't let the butler notice and just said that she appreciated his attentiveness and everything that he had done to serve her. The butler was happy to hear that from her when and butted in, but Tatiana stopped her. She ordered and to do what she should do. She purposely assigned her to sort through the new coming deliveries. And was confused and wanted to say something, but Tatiana told her that she was sure that her maid would do a great job in sorting the deliveries and where those items came from. When and heard that, she already knew what her madam was talking about. And obeyed her order when she understood why her madam wanted her to sort through the coming deliveries. Tatiana was left with the butler. She expressed her gratitude to have him look after the household for her and she was embarrassed to admit that she did not know anything about it. They also talked about how he looks after Kynel's wardrobe and the butler said that they bring the finest garments befitting Freya's most gallant hero. After that, he tours Tatiana in the mansion where he shows off how he took everything with care before she went back to her room. A few days later, the band of mercenaries came with plenty of huge boxes that were sent by their captain. According to them, Kynel put her in charge of those boxes. When Tatiana asks the butler to move the boxes into her dressing room so she can take a look at what can be used and not, Owen gets angry since their captain ordered that it was the madam's responsibility, so they move it by themselves. Tatiana learned a few things about the Townsend Manor over the last few days. First, it was awfully desolate for such a grand residence. Second, the servants seem way too relaxed about their work and last was confirmed with the boxes. Tiara was astonished at what she saw, they were shining shimmering items. 
Those boxes contain how Kainal becomes incredibly wealthy in the sight of Tatiana, wealthier than her sisters. She only knew him as the illegitimate grandson of Marquis Targa, the war hero of Freya, and now her husband. She really does not have a clue as to what kind of person he is. She thought of the things that Kainal had gone through while she was sleeping comfortably in her mother's mansion. While she was on it, she did have a little clue about him since they already held hands and spent the night together, but they didn't exactly consummate their marriage yet. He was kind to her and tended to everything she asked him so it made her think that his goodness was the reason why she was able to sleep so soundly even though he was right next to her. On that night, the maid informed Tatiana that their master had returned, which made her run to the front door to see her husband. Kainal was ordering his people to feed the horses first, before they got some rest, when his wife called his name. She went near him, but he questioned where she could be going at that hour. He was about to touch his wife, but he froze when he realized that he was still full of the monster's blood. But Tatiana did not care and just grabbed his hand. She dragged him to the room where the boxes were and questioned about what he just sent to her. She was confused as to why he sent her plenty of boxes full of treasures. Kainal thought she was complaining because they were not enough. Instead of answering, Kainal grabbed her by her waist when he noticed her thin body and questioned if she had been skipping her meals. He worried that there were things that were not to her liking in there. He clarified that he sent those treasures so she could buy anything that she wanted such as dresses and jewelry, but she was still wearing the same dresses. She was astonished when she realized that he sent them to her so she could satisfy her needs. Tatiana could not believe that her husband owned these kinds of treasures on his land and dug them just to offer her. Tatiana had a hard time processing it in her mind. While she was thinking, she bumped into a box and found a jewel that she had never seen before. According to Kainal, it was the heart of a flask. Tatiana was astounded by hearing that it was the heart of a dragon that money can't even buy. She still couldn't believe it and thought that Kainal got scammed since flasks only lived near Arca, the northernmost holy land where only direct descendants of the imperial family could enter. Kainal explained that they live near Arca and not inside them so he can get them. But Tatiana said that flesks breathe out a fire to burn their body before they die so it was still impossible to get their heart. Kainal made sense when he told her that he took it out while it was still alive. He told her that he only believed things that he saw for himself including things and people. He added that the gold was saved up from working as a mercenary while the jewels and everything else were either rewarded or taken from pirate ships. Tatiana was now convinced that it was all his legitimate property, and Kainal told her that it was also her property now. And since she's already Mrs. Townsend, she should be taking care of all their property whether she likes it or not. Tatiana covered his mouth to stop him from talking since she needed to organize her thoughts about everything that he had said. He was stunned by her sudden move and while looking at her, he held her hand and suddenly kissed her. They had an intimate kiss, and through that, he concluded that she was no longer sick anymore. Kainal realized that he was covered in dirt, sweat, and blood and he assumed that Tatiana wouldn't like that. Kainal was about to leave when Tatiana halted him from leaving. She was scared to be left by him with all the boxes. Kainal accompanied her to their room and became sentimental. She was still saying things until she dozed to sleep. At the house Karshien, Aunt Charlize came just to argue with Larissa about the issue of Tatiana. She exclaimed her dismay about Tatiana's decision to marry someone over her nephew, the Duke. She informed them that Alexei would be getting engaged to someone who is from a reputable family very soon. She told the Viscountess that she would regret it and before she left, the Viscountess reminded her to take the engagement ring with her which the consort took and slammed the door. Larissa complained about Aunt Charlize after she left and said that it was her nephew's fault since he couldn't keep it in his pants. Anesha comes to warn her that someone might hear her, but Larissa does not care at all, which she was aware of. After the wedding of Tatiana, Larissa went back to her usual life as if nothing had happened, to show the people that she was just doing fine. Her daughters look so worried about how she acted after she disowned Tatiana as one of her daughters. 
They talked about what happened earlier with the consort, but that is nothing compared to how they were treated after their father died. She thought what the consort said about your malicious words will come back and haunt you one day, that will be a sight to see. That was going through her head while enduring all that hostility. She will make those people regret what they said in her house, including the consort. Anesha told her mother that they heard Tiara's old friend, Rebecca, from the house Carrion, has their eyes on House Atlas. Larissa Karshian found out that House Carrion and House Atlas are now joining hands through the marriage of Duke Atlas and now with Tiara's old friend, Rebecca. She knew that she never was a friend to Tiara, but Tiara was too spoiled to be a good judge of character and that was why she chose the Black Wolf over the Duke, Larissa said. Anesha Burden, her eldest daughter, said that there was nothing that they could do since their marriage was already approved by the Supreme Temple. Her mother agreed and was mad at how the bishops failed to do their part after taking her money. When Anesha remembered how simple her sister's wedding was, she pitied Tiara for not even wearing a proper dress on that special day. She recalled how Tatiana rejected her to come with her when she wanted to help her out of her situation. The Viscountess is certain that Tatiana knew of the consequences of her careless decision, since she was her daughter, after all. She then clarified that she was not her daughter anymore, because she kicked her out. She already exceeds her limit by giving her multiple chances to go back. Anesha tried to defend her youngest sister from the wrath of her mother, but their mother just answered like she knew it all better. Kicking her out of her family will make Tiara learn her lesson for disobeying her mother. Anesha couldn't believe what she had heard from her mother. With certainty, the Viscountess knew that Tiara would not last long with a man who did not even love her. The reality of life will hit her sooner just like what happened to her when her husband died. He might not have been a good man before, but she still liked him, and she still grieved for his death when he left this world. She could have drowned in pain before but seeing them in the poorest situation made her eyes stopped from crying. That is how difficult the reality of life was for her. The Townsend family's name and their money were something that Kynel never even wished for. The life of Kynel Townsend started when a lady died after giving birth. When there is no one from his family would appear to take care of him, Mrs. Hart took care of him and gave her late husband's family name, Townsend, to him even if it was just nothing to him. He is contented with the simple life he had with Mrs. Hart and he does not care about the wealthy standard of their society where they were an outcast before. But his perception of life changed when he met Tatiana Karshian three years ago. That was the first time he wished he were wealthy. When the mercenary of the Black Wolves started to grow, money naturally filled his hands until he hardly counted them all and did not know where to put the plenty of riches he had. After Tatiana heard his reason, she was still questioning him if that was his reason, to bury it all underground. She was just worried that someone might found it because there is a law that says if any property was gained outside the Freya, the items will belong to the person who has found it, but usually they offer them to the imperial family. But Kynel did not even take it as a serious problem, since that applied only to knights and not to a mercenary like him. Tatiana couldn't believe her husband for being clueless. Kynel clarified if she knew that before marrying him, he didn't abide by the code of chivalry, which Tatiana said yes. Unlike the imperial knights, he is not obligated to pledge his loyalty to anyone. Tatiana told him that he should take in better care of his treasures, especially the heart of a flesk, but Kynel said that he doesn't have time to pay any attention to every single one of those. After hearing that, she found out that everything that he had brought was just a partial portion of his belongings, and there were still many more buried somewhere in the ground. Tatiana insists that he needs to store it all properly so he can prove that they belong to him, which he does not want to happen because he does not want to leave his name behind anywhere else in this world. Kynel reminded her that all those treasures also belonged to her, and she could do whatever she liked with them, either buying clothes or anything else. He is handing everything he has to her, since they are already each other's better half. When Kynel assured her that his house was now her home, Tatiana agreed to take care of everything, but she warned him to not blame her if he did not approve of how she spent the money. He said that those things are not that important to him including about leaving his name again. But Tatiana had now the authority to oppose when she asked him about her name. 
As he stated her new name, Tatiana Townsend, it made him realize that he married her and already given his name to her. She argued that he should stop acting like he was living for nothing when he already had a role as her husband, and he must do his part. She reminded him that he shouldn't just leave his wealth to her and pretend that he doesn't care about anything in this world. She was expecting him to do his part as her husband if he didn't want her to leave with all his treasures. After a long argument with his wife, he went to his lieutenant to ask about his other subordinates. The lieutenant reported to him that all of them were already resting, killing two worth weeks of monsters for only a week, surely exhausted. He also informed him that he was going to decline their next mission like he had instructed him to do for them to have some rest, but Kynel changed his mind in an instant and ordered him to accept the mission now since he had a reason to make more money. At the house Karshian's garden, Count Auburton was reporting to the Viscountess and Inesha about what he found out after he looked into Kynel's finances. Since Kynel has been departing from everywhere as a mercenary, he could not find any bank account that he holds on to their place. Seems like his mansion was only authorized as his belongings. Upon hearing that questionable report, the Viscountess assumed that Kynel must have used his money somewhere since she believed that he makes a lot of money with his work as a mercenary. His record does not even surprise her as if she were expecting nothing from him. She murmured how foolish he was after refusing her offer and declined the crown prince to make him a duke. Marrying Tatiana made him so ambitious, but he needs to realize how important the money is. Count Auburton was certain that Kynel had a great reputation even though he was poor. He reported how the Black Wolves got rid of the monsters from Terran Mountains for free, which also got on the Viscountess' nerves, and swore how she despised him even more upon hearing more information about him. The Viscountess remembered how the Supreme Temple told her while baptizing Tatiana that she would have all the richest in the world and that she would succeed in everything she did as long as the Viscountess cherished her. For her, they have just lied to her just to let them use her daughter to model all the angel statues in the temple. She told Count Auburton that he could now stop looking at Kynel's finances. She doubts that he would become wealthy overnight after digging up some fortune somewhere. But his duty will continue by looking into something she has mentioned to him before. The Count agreed and said that it wouldn't be easy since it was such a long time ago, but he would get more people to look into it. The Viscountess was about to leave when she remembered something. Her wrath leads her to a such extent of stopping all her donations to the Supreme Temple. Their family situation is already stressing Inesha, she does not know what her mother is thinking anymore. Even though Tiara was already married with the approval of the temple, it seems like the Viscountess is being hasty, and if she continues opposing the majesty, things will get worse. Her husband was just beside her to console her who seemed to understand the situation. There is nothing that their mother can do, except for letting Tiara go after she disowned her. Her husband noticed that the Viscountess was not that mad anymore, since she had not raised her voice on that day, and he even saw her smile. Anesha was a little surprised by her husband's sweetness, but how calm her mother was made Anesha even more worried. She knows her mother very well, she would do anything just to have that enormous revenge on anyone who humiliated her, and she knew that she would not give up that easily even if it was the archbishop, the imperial consort, or even death himself. At the Townsend mansion, Tiara and her maid, and, were busy sorting out their treasures. Tiara was already complaining, since it seemed like it was a never-ending of sorting jewels, money, and more. When she was about to finish, Kynel probably brought more. On the other hand, Anne's eyes are twinkling as she enjoys sorting those precious shining things. Surely, all of it must have an unidentifiable amount. A few days later, Tiara went to the library to find out how much all her treasures were worth. People would surely think that she is the wife of a lucky rich man now who does not even know his father. But she worries that some people might take advantage of her husband just to get all his richness, and they would probably just dump him after they got what they want. She said that appearances are what aristocrats value the most, and the rich ones are what they hate the most than being an illegitimate child, because it hurts their pride. Disclosing this to the world would just be a burden to him, she knew Kynel already suffered long enough and she did not want to add some more to it. And just told her that she was being awfully considerate of someone who didn't even greet her early on that morning. 
and knew that Tiara was aware that Kynel was waiting outside her door after being gone for several days. Tiara rushed outside after ordering and to just stay inside since she was the only one she could trust with those treasures. While walking in the hallway, she saw the frame of his picture on the wall and remembered how he said that he did not want to leave his name behind anywhere else in this world. She was not in the mood while remembering it since it was like he didn't have any attachment to life. While she was pondering about what he had said, Kynel appeared beside her. And while looking at him, she thought to herself that it was not the proper behavior of a married man like him. She just passed by him like she did not plan to talk with him. But Kynel spoke when he noticed the kind of dress she was wearing. He asked her why she was still wearing that kind of dress even though he gave her money to buy a more fancy and beautiful dress. Of all the things that he could have said, it made Tiara mad for just criticizing first her dress. When he did not say anything anymore, Tiara just decided to go without even telling him where she was heading. Kynel questioned her and said that it was not that hard just inform him where she was going. That made Tiara even more furious and questioned him if it was also hard to just inform her that he would be away for several days. Tiara's voice echoed in the whole mansion, but Kynel could not even answer if it was hard for him to just inform her about his whereabouts. Without waiting for his answer, she just decided to go after she told him that she did not plan on staying out overnight, just like how he disrespectfully did. While Kynel was watching her leaving, his mind could not just get where her madness was coming from. He could not just understand what made her wife so upset. He really didn't have any idea at all, since she was so hard to understand. Tiara went to Levern Central Library. People would glance at her and start murmuring, since she was known for being a Karshian. But Tiara just ignored them and focused on reading about the flask she had found in her husband's treasure. She discovered how dangerous it is to retrieve something as fancy as that. They are a family of fire-breathing dragons that can be found near the continent's northernmost holy land, Arca. They burn themselves alive when they die so there are no remnants of their bones or skin. Since the red heart of a flesk is the very last thing to burn, it can be retrieved and used as a magical ingredient. But if it is not taken out quickly, the retriever will catch on fire and burn to death. Tatiana was getting angry while reading about how dangerous her husband was doing. The price of the flesk was unknown since it had never been seen on the market in its original form, but around 20 years ago, a fragment of the heart was sold at Leverin's Craze Auction House for 10 million gold per gram. Thinking about her husband, Tiara was mad at how clueless her husband was. When she left the library, her mind was so clouded that she could not even notice those glances and hear the murmurs of the people she had passed by. The thought that Kynel was just carelessly throwing out his life for a mission is bothering her. She wonders that maybe he was not really afraid of dying and it is driving her insane while questioning why she was even worried. Going to the battlefield does not make him anxious and that is why he has been called a hero now. He had been like that since three years ago, and maybe that is the reason why he did not even bother to inform her that he would be away. And how he just came back and asked where she was going irritates her. She questioned herself if there was nothing in this world that his husband truly wanted. While she was walking, she saw a beautiful dress, she remembered how Kynel would always criticize her dress after telling her many times to buy a new one. It looks like it matters to him that much, so she decided to go to that boutique and buy that dress. After walking inside the shop, the owner recognized her immediately. But the dress she was pointing out was not available to sell. Tatiana knew and asked if it was her mother doing, the owner was surprised and couldn't tell the truth, which made Tatiana have a serious look on her face. She was not surprised at all even the dressmaker bought off by her mother just like how she bribed the Supreme Temple and the government officials of the Leveron. The dressmaker was sorry to her because that dress had already been picked by another client. And it happened that the client she was referring to was the other woman of the Duke that he cheated with. She was yelling after she lost patience in waiting to fit the dress when she saw Tiara. The girl came out to address her as Madame Townsend. Duke Atlas was also there, and he was astounded that his woman named Natalia was talking to Tatiana. Tiara sarcastically greeted him while addressing his grace instead of answering his question. 
Duke Atlas could not just believe how she addressed him formally like she was setting boundaries from the way she called him. Tatiana noticed that he was drunk. She asked how she should address him and added that they are nothing to each other now. The Duke got mad and yelled her name, Tiara. Natalia convinced the Duke to calm down. She thinks that Tatiana must be embarrassed to appear in front of her old fiancé with that ugly dress. But Tatiana was unbothered with how she dressed in front of them, she even pointed out how she would always see Natalia almost naked like she was bragging about her indecency. Natalia got mad but Tiara was not finished yet and advised her to have a bit more self-respect. Before leaving, she showed how disappointed she was to the owner since she judged her clients poorly and Tatiana doubted that she would last long in that industry. When the Duke saw Tatiana leaving, he wanted to follow her but Natalia stopped her and complained about how she was treated by his ex-fiancé. To her surprise, the Duke shoved her to follow Tatiana outside. He called her name, not minding the scene he was making. When Tiara heard him, she faced him and reprimanded him for calling her by her name. Even how obvious that she did not want to talk to him, he still insisted. He exclaimed that he was just using Natalia, just to fill what he needed from Tiara. Instead of pity, Tiara felt disgusted by what he said when she remembered how he hilariously cheated on her place. She wondered how low he could be to be like this to her. With a serious look on her face, she reminded him that she was already married, and her husband would also be offended by his action. It made the Duke think that she already offered herself to Kynal, whom he was referring to as an animal, and that does not make her a virtuous woman at all. He questioned what was so great about him that made Tiara decide to abandon her family and her reputation. He insisted she tell her reason now of how Kynal got her into his arms since they were already on the topic. Tiara frowned at him as he sounded like he did not deserve to be respected as a duke, so she told him to stop. For Tiara, Duke Atlas is nothing compared to Kynal, whom she trusted that he would never do something dirty like what he did. She was about to leave, but Duke Atlas grabbed her hands, preventing her from leaving. He was not threatened, and he even urged her to call her husband, he was so full of himself and thought low of Kynal just because of what he thinks his status in their society. Tiara begins to feel anxious when the Duke is already closer to her. But in one swift move, Kynal came and made the Duke helpless with how he locked his arms on his back. Tiara was astonished by his sudden arrival, just in time to save her. Kynal told the Duke to just talk to him instead if he had something to say to his wife. Duke Atlas could not fight and shouted to Tiara to let him go, but Kynal did not like how he called her by her name. He twisted his arms more, to make it painful, like he did not care even though he was a duke. When the duke screamed in pain, Tiara held Kynal's arm to calm her husband and told him to stop, so he let go of the duke. Duke Atlas almost stumbled and he was so mad for the humiliation and what Kynal did. He threatened him by reporting him to the palace so he could be punished, he was so confident that Kynal would be begging on his knees before him. He will make sure that Kynal would regret this. Kynal just smirked after hearing his nonsense whines. He knew that Alexei could not make it because he was smart enough to ask for something greater rather than having that dupe title he seemed to be so proud of. Kynal informed him that he had received immunity for any dealings with the nobles instead of becoming a duke. After hearing that, the duke was surprised so his threats a while ago were useless. Kynal warned him that he would be merciless if that happened again. Instead of listening to them, Tiara turned her back and began to leave. When Kynal saw her leaving without bringing him, he rushed to follow his wife while Duke Atlas was left in the street frowning. They were just silent while striding along the street, Tiara was obvious that she was thinking something that made her upset again, while Kynal was still clueless. When Tiara stopped walking, Kynal asked where she was heading. He worries that she must be tired of having a long walk that day. He even asked why she did not purchase a dress, which made Tiara mad as he was talking about dresses again. Tiara faced him and unpleasingly asked him if he had been following her all the time. Kynal did not answer, but she knew that he did. She thought that he did that because he was worried that she would run away, but Kynal defended that he was just doing his part as her husband like what she told him. 
He reminded her what she told him about doing his part if he didn't want to see her run away which he didn't want to happen. When she heard his reason, she just caressed her temple in disappointment. She corrected that his way is not how a husband plays his part, he should have just come with her. Kainal reasoned that he might just cause her more trouble if he accompanied her, which made Tatiana confused. He thought that she would not be comfortable if she bought clothes or even walked down the street if he were around since it had been like that all his life. He admits that he does not know how to be a husband besides offering money to her. Tiara could not hold it in but exclaimed how clueless he was. She pointed out what she wanted. After marrying her, they were supposed to live under the same roof, but as his wife, she does not even know about his whereabouts nor the day he will be coming home. And now that she was doing the same thing as him, he had the urge to hate her doings. She also pointed out that he did not even consummate their marriage. Kynal was surprised to hear that. Kynal knew that she was not ready and well yet, but before he could talk, Tatiana reminded him about wanting her for her body and appearance before. He asked her if she was ready now. He was also aware that she barely went out of their room, which made him think that she was too fragile. While he was still speaking, Tiara reached his face. Kainal froze for a moment when she suddenly kissed him to tell him that she was already ready and that she was not sick anymore. Kainal pulled her to kiss her again and Tiara could feel how her husband wanted her. They came home together to continue what they were doing on the street. Tiara was nervous and wanted to take a break but Kainal could not wait any longer, so he kissed her again while he was on top of her. On the next day, Tiara woke up without Kainal beside her. When she tried to get up, she suddenly felt the pain from what they did last night. She glanced at the emptiness of the bed beside her, she thought that Kainal probably left again for his job of killing a monster, without even informing her. She was expecting him to stay at least the day after they consummate their marriage, but she thinks that it is already too much to ask since it was not part of their agreement. While Tiara was wondering about how Kainal restrained himself from this all the time, the maids came to clean their room. When the maid was about to clean their bed, she was surprised at what she saw while Tatiana thought that it was a long passionate night. She then decided to get herself ready for the whole day before going out of the room. When she went out, she could not believe that her husband was just at their home the whole time. She was not expecting to see him in their house like he used to. She questioned why she was even tearing up upon seeing her husband, maybe because she might have gone mad at the thought that he left again. Kainal was confused about her reaction while Tiara was already annoyed because all he could just say was, what and why. For the first time, Kainal told her that he would be coming home late today, but he promised that he would not stay out all night. This is what Tiara has always complained about since then and now. She could not believe that her husband was obeying her. After remembering their night, Kainal admitted that Tatiana made a valid point about acting like a husband if he wanted her to be the lady of the house. Before her husband left, she invited him to have breakfast with her, just like a normal wedded couple does since neither of them has done anything like that. While eating, Tiara was silently observing her husband. She was surprised to see that Kainal knew table manners etiquette, just like a noble person does. Kainal noticed how Tiara stared at him, so he wondered if there was something wrong with how he ate and how he was not good enough for her, but Tiara immediately opposed what he said. She told him how she was amused at how much he could eat. Kainal answered that he ate more because he did not know when he would have his next meal. He added that it was nothing new since it was always like that when he was growing up. After Tiara expressed what she has noticed with the way he eats, Kainal pointed out her food. Tiara considered her food as already a lot when it was just a little portion of the food they had on the table. She said that she needed all the energy that she could consume because she had work that she had to take charge of. When Kainal asked what was it, Tatiana answered him with a big smile saying that it was the role of being the lady of their house. Tiara informed her husband how he put her in charge of being a lady in the house, so from now on, she expects that she will be busy. After what she said, it made Kainal wonder if his house requires a lot of work or if nothing in there is to her liking. How he questioned everything made Tiara realize that he was already contented with how things were right now. 
He noticed the emptiness of the long table and pondered a little, then he suggested that they could go to the main street again since she did not get a chance to purchase anything yesterday. But Tiara was just annoyed by how he thought a wife should be. It is obvious what type of perception he has with noble women. Kynel said that she did not have to do the household chores because it was the duty of their butler and maids. His lieutenant always reports to him how their butler took charge of everything in his house so she should not stress herself to get involved in any of that. Kynel was being considerate to her so he suggested she take a rest while pondering what she really liked to do. Tiara tried to clarify to him if he was against everything she would do in the house, which he answered no. So, his wife commanded him that all he must do is to watch. The maids made themselves busy while they were glancing at their masters who were just standing there. They are intimidated by the presence of the couple and they have no idea why they are watching them. When Kynel noticed something strange, he could not tell what his wife was planning when she asked for ten more minutes. She said that it was how long the servants had kept their masters just standing there. Sooner, the butler came while apologizing for being late and Tiara accepted it since she was aware of how busy their butler was. He reported that they were busy on the second floor while changing the curtains that were imported from Roisha, which is perfect for keeping out the midnight sun and he is certain that the lady of the house would like it which she agreed. Tiara asked the butler to serve them the tea he used to give to her, which he said was from the teak. The butler gleefully accepted her request and asked for a moment to make that tea. Their maid served them the tea, but the reaction of Tiara was not even pleased with the tea she was drinking like how she tasted it before. The butler thanked his masters for letting him serve someone like them, but Tatiana interrupted him. She still managed to praise his service for her, but she admits how disappointed she was in how other people deceived their loyal butler after claiming that the tea was from the teak. While trying to catch the butler, Kynel was just watching what she was doing like what she had told him to do. Tiara repeated his claim that he bought the tea leaves from the department store of Bachman, but the butler agitatedly answered where the tea leaves came from. Tiara highly doubted his answer because she knew that the farm manager could have died now after selling them the product owned by her mother. The butler was not aware that the house Karshien owned a tea farm in Teak. But what surprised him more was when Tiara said that the whole tea farm in that region belonged to her mother. She did not let herself be bothered about the department store where the butler bought the tea leaves because they belonged to her sister. The butler was taken aback so he just admitted that he had just been mistaken and asked for forgiveness since there was so much work for him to take care of. However, Tiara forgave him but she told him that this was the only time that he would be forgiven and there was no second time. Tiara opened the topic about the curtains, which he claimed was from Roisha. In the back of the butler's mind, he thought about how he already forged the paperwork of that transaction, so he continued to tell more information about it and involved the port where it was delivered to confirm their transaction. She declined the invitation of the butler to see the import documents by pointing out how his claims became strange to her. Tiara knew that Roisha did not export fabric from December to March to restrict access to the fabrics. While stating the facts, the eyes of the butler widen when Tiara accuses him that he must be perhaps a smuggler or a liar butler to his employer. The butler remained his head down in humiliation after Tiara confirmed her assumptions about how he does his jobs. For the past two weeks, she had a good look from the tableware to the furniture around the house. She saw how the butler tried to do his job well, but the good look of Tiara in everything could not be ever fooled. He lowered his head down more and claimed that everything was just a misunderstanding that made Kynel stand up and want to punish him. Tiara raised her hand to stop Kynel, which he obediently obeyed. She glared at the butler and made the teacup as an example of his work where he found something with a pattern that somehow resembles the real Ambroke. She knew that the real tableware from Ambroke was unbreakable, so she purposely dropped the teacup with a tea which surprised the butler and Kynel. The cup was broken and the tea spilled on her dress, where she found out that she was also wearing a low-quality dress that was not worth its price. With her statements and examples, she concluded that their butler had been giving her husband a fake expensive bill the whole time. 
All the maids were surprised and she called in to hand her the list they had collected about the expenses on their house and calculated how much their butler pocketed. The butler was shocked after hearing that and asked why she was interested in things all of a sudden when she did not care about their expenses before. There it was revealed that she purposely showed him that she was not interested in their household before so she could take a look around freely. She was surprised when she realized that it would be over 100 million gold pocketed by their butler. He tried to save himself by explaining how he managed to fill brand new items when he came to the mansion that was as good as empty. He also calculated that their expenses added up because they needed to hire more servants and he was confident that they were fortunate enough to keep capable servants since he was a good judge of character. The lady of the house agreed with how good a judge of character he was in choosing his employer and not the servants. It was like every time she spoke, the butler could feel that there was something she was going to reveal that added to his nervousness. She then asked her husband if he knew the costs of their household per month, which he answered that he had no idea. Those employees were lucky enough to have that kind of employer like Kynel. He was a wealthy employer, but at the same time, he was inattentive, which was rare, in Leverin. She now questioned how their maids acted a while ago when they were just standing there to watch them. If they were a capable servant that he hired, they must have attended to their employer when they saw them standing in the middle of the house rather than just passing around like they did not exist in that place. Tiara knew that they were paid more than they deserved just to sneak around and watch their employer's actions. She had no plan on keeping those kinds of servants, so she decided to fire them all. They were horrified at their decision and one maid asked to give them a chance since it was unfair. When Tatiana looked at her, she just told her to go to her mother to beg for that second chance. Tiara knew well that her mother planted someone in their household to watch over them. The maid asked how she knew about it so Tiara told her that it was obvious since the maid already knew what she liked. She then called the servant who came to fix their bed. She told her to go to her mother and report to her what she saw in their bed that would prove that they already consummated their marriage. She even reminded the maid to tell her mother how passionate they were. Tiara knew her mother well, she would use her power to say that their marriage was invalid. Now that they have consummated their marriage, she just hopes that the people she has planted in their house will immediately report to her what she has discovered as she will never let her mother have her way. Before leaving the hall, Tiara reminded her husband that they would postpone the dress shopping they were planning since she was busy now to fix this problem. Kynel asked his wife if he should end the butler's life, but she just decided to let him stay for a while since they still have an amount to settle with him. They were certain that he would not run away because the black wolves would not let him have his way to do that. After catching the dishonesty of their butler, Tiara is not done thinking about the upcoming problems. She remembered what happened yesterday on their encounter with the Duke and she wonders how that person will take action since he is someone who does not admit his own mistakes. However, Kynel refuses to listen while she is talking about another man, so he does not care about whatever that Duke will do. Despite that trouble, Tiara somehow felt relieved about the immunity he got to any dealings with the noble people, but she did not know it was just a lie. Kynel thought to himself that he could just ask about that now to the crown prince. Their conversation was interrupted when Owen called his captain from the outside of the window. His wife urged him to go to Owen since he had been waiting for him for a while. Before leaving, Kynel questioned what she would do when he left. He worries that she will be left alone after what happened. She assured him that she had and with her. Kynel said it was not he was referring to. She didn't have anyone to help her other than Anne. Tatiana told him that she never did, to begin with, which surprised Kynel after hearing that. She would be busy hiring a new butler. When Kynel asked what kind of butler she was looking for, she said that she needed a butler who would be devoted enough to serve their household. She does not require it to be perfect at the job, but all that she needs is someone who has a good integrity that could not be blinded by money. She thinks that it would be nice if she hired someone good with numbers, with a strong authority who could supervise his staff well, and someone strong enough to guard her in any place. Hiring new staff is an undoubtedly difficult task. She needs to be more careful in choosing someone for the sake of her plans. 
Kaina was curious about the plan she was referring to, but instead of answering, she just reminded him that his work was waiting for him. Owen interrupted their talk when he shouted to call his captain again. Owen was already complaining due to his late coming. He informed his captain that Lieutenant Gerald needed to talk with him right away. But he was taken aback when Kynal said to his wife that he already had a perfect candidate. When Kynal left, his minds were clouded by the expectations he had for Tiara before. He recalled how his wife questioned the way he wanted her to live now that she was no longer a Karshian. It seems impossible to believe that Tatiana Karshian would be working instead of living her life before she got married. He does not plan on changing her lifestyle and wants her to be the glamorous and proud queen she used to be. He didn't know what a wife was supposed to do, but at least, he didn't want her to wither away by his side. He realized that she was different from what he imagined. She was much prouder that he remembered and laughed more than he expected. He even remembered how passionate she was when they consummated their marriage and how she invited him to dinner before he left home. He smiled when he realized that she would be mad again if he did not keep his promise. Lieutenant Gerald immediately greeted him when he came. He noticed that Owen was not with him when he ordered him to call their captain. But Kynal told him that Owen would never be coming back because he already got a new job. In the back of his mind, he thought that he was already killed by him because of his mouth, but he wondered who in the world would hire someone hard to handle him other than their captain. He asked their captain if he would talk to Owen but Kynal said that there's no need to look for him and added that if ever he comes back, he should end his life which the lieutenant made speechless. Kynal asked him why he was looking for him. Lieutenant Gerald told him that he had a guest. Before he could finish his words, Kynal was surprised when the crown prince showed up while apologizing for the unannounced visit he did. Hi guys! This is the end of season 1. I will continue this story once there are more chapters released so stay tuned to my channel. For the time being, you can watch other interesting manhwa stories like this on my channel, and don't forget to subscribe.